INC is a proud member of the Siam City Cement Group Public Limited, a leading cement manufacturer in Southeast Asia. The Siam City Cement Group provides world-class construction materials to a host of countries around the world. This includes Cambodia, Bangladesh, Vietnam, Thailand, Indonesia and Sri Lanka. With a plethora of landmarks and buildings that define the skylines of these countries, the Siam Cement Group pledges to be a role model in corporate governance and sustainable development. INC Cement, Sri Lanka's premier cement manufacturer, is the brand behind our country's leading cement products and the driving force behind making Sri Lanka more sustainable. With a reputation built on outstanding performance in the quality of our products, unparalleled customer service, the dedication of our employees, our respect for the communities in which we operate and our ambition to set the standards for the industry of tomorrow. We have contributed to the growth of Sri Lanka with iconic developments across the island, just to name a few. The Lotus Tower, Altia Residencies, the Colombo South Harbour, Southern Expressway, Matala Airport, the Kalladi Bridge, the Kotalavala Defence University, Mahinda Rajapaksha International Cricket Stadium. INSI has cemented its position as the most preferred local manufacturer of cement in Sri Lanka. With its widespread distribution network comprised of over 7,000 dealers in retail segment located island-wide. Today, we have two plants in Puttalam and Gaul and two terminals in Gaul and Colombo. INSEE's Sunstar brand is Sri Lanka's first cement product to be awarded the Green Labelling Certification by the Green Building Council and was the first blended cement to launch in Sri Lanka. INSEE has a wide portfolio of cements and services to suit all your construction needs. The most popular among them, INSEE Sunstar, INSEE Mahavalli Marine Plus, INSEE Extra for mass pouring concrete, INSEE Rapid Flow Plus, INSEE Eco Cycle, INSEE Concrete, Convert by INSEE, state-of-the-art innovation and development facility. Having been a part of Sri Lanka for almost a decade, we will continue to build on our long heritage of shared loyalty, creating trusting relationships with our business partners, people and community, and delivering our promise of building the nation. Challenging the challenges would be the key in winning in difficult time periods. I would say you, me and everyone, uh, today in the world are in a kind of a difficult time period. So challenging the challenge challenges would be the key avenue or the stream to win in this kind of period. Uh, in challenging the challenges, I would say innovation would be the key topic, key subject or the key uh, weapon we should uh, with us in our hands to challenge the challenges. So in the eye to eye, Innovation to Industry Collaboration Space is organizing its knowledge sharing session for the 26th time. Uh, so today, 26th INC I2I knowledge sharing webinar session is going to start. This is the 11th uh, webinar session and 26th knowledge sharing session. Uh, having organize, uh, organizing 26 uh, knowledge sharing sessions is not a simple task. It's not an easy game. It's uh, to gather the fraternity in Sri Lanka, engineering fraternity, the people who like these topics, people who want to enhance their knowledge, experience, and grab the exposure of other resource persons. It is not easy for us to organize this kind of uh, events for 26 times. So therefore, uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, let me welcome all of you uh, on behalf of the INC Cement Management for the 26th INC I2I Knowledge Sharing Session. This is the 11th uh, knowledge sharing webinar session we organize as INC I2I, Innovation to Industry. Today's session, uh, the topic of the session is developing sustainable and high performance concrete with new technologies. Uh, for that, we have, uh, uh, we have invited to uh, conduct the session to one of our proud products of Sri Lanka, uh, Dr. Shanaka Baduge, uh, manager, research fellow, of Research Center for Advanced Manufacturing of Prefabricated Housing, Department of Infrastructure Engineering, the University of Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Dr. Shanaka Baduge, first of all, thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Uh, let me invite uh, to welcome all of you to this uh, webinar session. Uh, may I invite Mr. Jan Kunik, Executive Vice President and Commercial Director, Marketing, Sales and Innovation of INSI Cement. Jan, over to you to welcome our audience. Good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me or see me. Yes, Jan, we can hear you clearly. 
Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Dr. Sanaka Barugate, for, for today's session, together with Professor Priyan Mendes, also for finding the time. And it's very late in Australia, engineer Sadiq Madushan and engineer Kanishka Chandra Tilika for this presentation today, for finding the time in preparing it, but also sharing it with all of us. We actually have participants today from Indonesia, from Singapore, from Vietnam and from Sri Lanka. So I'm very proud that we have an international audience today again. The session today, developing sustainable and high performance concretes with new technologies, I think is very, very important. The customer needs are changing. We are going from well, much, much more towards vertical structures, especially in metropolitan areas. We know it from Jakarta or from Bangkok. Here in Sri Lanka, we will have Port City coming up. Um, we have towers and high rise towers worldwide now, which go towards 500 meters, 800 meters we have already. And the future, they are, there are plans for towers over 1000 meters. So for sure, um, we need different concretes, uh, high performance concretes, high performance strengths. Um, and I think uh, the, the academia will today share some very interesting uh, modeling techniques as well to go from normal high strength concrete to towards uh, very high strength concrete and then ultra high strength concrete. Uh, concrete. Uh, uh, so it, I think it will be a very interesting element for sure for in say cement site, cement as a binder is a vital element uh, if we look at innovation, we have innovated from NC cement a lot over the last three and a half, four years. And uh, also Professor Mendes was a lot involved there. If we look 100 years ago, we had ordinary Portland, Portland cement with one reaction. Uh, then we had blended hydraulic cements where we have two chemical re reactions. And also now in Sri Lanka, we launched the new composite cement where we have three chemical reactions to make concrete even better. Uh, uh, cement is a key binder within uh, the challenges of high rise and coping with 800 meters or a thousand meter high towers. And uh, so we are also going with this development. Today's presentation, I think will go uh, aside of the sand, whether we have natural sand or manufactured sand, much more into the side of the aggregates what are the right aggregates for those uh, very high strengths and ultra high strengths uh, um, uh, concretes to meet those customer demands and needs. And uh, we will look into uh, uh, microstructure and microstructure, and then even look at uh, nanoscale and, and uh, ultra nanoscale particle elements. So I think it will be very, very challenging discussion uh, we already have some questions as well from Kavishan, discuss differences of cement properties of different cements. So one idea I've already given, uh, coming from an airplane which was made out of alloy. Today it's made out of carbon, which is a composite material. Uh, similar happened on the cement side as well, from ordinary Portland cement to Portland composite cement. Uh, so I think we have many, many different uh, elements there. We will also clarify actually in the next knowledge sharing session, end of this month, the three different type of reactions. So I've taken already two of those questions, but I'm looking forward to this session. Today it's really about from the coarse aggregate up to the fine aggregates and ultra fines and the different modeling techniques. And with that, I'm handing over to the presenters for which I'm very, very thankful because in Australia it's very late already. So thank you again already now for this uh, for taking time here and for ensuring uh, that your knowledge is really well shared with all of us. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for this great collaboration from INSEE I try innovation to industry uh, collaboration space. Thank you very much and over to you, Tishan. Uh, thank you very much, Jan, for the kind introduction and also uh, Dishan. Uh, so can I share the screen uh, first of all? Yeah, Dr. Sharnaka, may I uh, take two minutes from you before you okay. start the session? 
okay. uh, first of all let me thank uh, uh, jan uh, jan thank you very much for your nice welcome and the briefing of the objectives of today's session uh, jan is our executive vice president and commercial director for marketing sales and innovation uh, before we proceed uh, with the uh, dr shanaka baduge's uh, session may i invite all of you when you have a query question please use the q and a column q and a uh, room uh, for you to ask questions from dr shanaka or the panel panelist uh, i would say we are very happy to see uh, professor um, priyan mendis is with us today and also uh, i saw professor tishan jaisingha sir uh, welcome you and many other uh, uh, uh personalities uh, we saw that who have uh, gathered here uh, for the session today on developing sustainable and high performance concrete with new technologies we have i think more than um, 150 participants today and i'm sure it's uh, increasing uh, minute by minute which is we are very happy to share this uh, knowledge experience and exposure under i to i innovation to industry i am privileged to present uh, dr shanaka baduge's profile to you i think it is uh, my duty and um, uh, it is my responsibility to present uh, the profile of dr shanaka baduge uh, dr kasun shanaka is a post doctoral research fellow of the department of infrastructure engineering the university of melbourne currently he is the manager of the center for advanced manufacturing of prefabricated housing funded by the australian research council his research interests include low carbon and energy efficient building systems high performance materials and composites prefabricated buildings and upcycling waste into engineering applications his contribution to develop design guidelines and sustainable mixed designs for ultra high performance concrete was recognized by the concrete institute of australia with a victoria award of excellence for technology and innovation he also an inventor of recycled plastic modular foam work system for construction which is licensed to an australian industry partner and dr shanaka baduge we identified him as a great product of sri lanka and uh, sir over to you uh, the audience is ready ayers are ready uh, to get your knowledge experience and exposure to be shared yeah i think uh, thank you adishan for the very kind introduction uh, to be honest like uh, uh, i think uh, yan also gave a very good uh, introduction on uh, the presentation uh, and also uh, i think the, the, I, i never thought this presentation will be a very special uh, presentation for me as well because professor jai singh also here he is my like a uh, mentor when i was uh, doing my undergraduate i learned a lot of from him especially the high rise designing uh, to many other things so i think i didn't I, this is like a really a special moment for me it's a great honor i would say so i would first of all i would like to say hi to professor jai singh uh, <laughs> and also in the other hand from the uh, priyan uh, mendis also here so he is my, uh, my the supervisor for phd so so today uh, what we are going to present is the uh, the output or the finding of our the research group so uh, i think uh, professor first of all i think professor priyan mendis i think uh, would li like to give a couple of like a, a like a, a information and some uh, uh, summary on our work so professor mendis i, I Are you around? Oh, yeah, I'm actually I'm here. Um, and uh, yeah, Dr. Shanaga, uh, I'll be very quick because it's uh, today you are the highlight and uh, you are the one. Uh, so I will take only uh, two or three minutes. Uh, just always it was very good to be there presenting. I think a similar series uh, like last year, just before the I was lucky to be there in Sri Lanka uh, uh, just before the the pandemic and. Uh, actually i almost got stuck uh, on the way from here sri lanka to australia just be, this was the pandemic was happening and uh, it was very good to be there in palia god uh, and give that talk in the, i think the same similar session and it was a full house i remember talking about waste materials at that time uh, so uh, inse has been always close to me and uh, i can in fact mr dan is here uh, uh, and sean of course um, Uh, again uh, mr uh, nandana and also dr mosa good to see dr mosa and i'm very very happy that dr tishan uh, professor tishan who is 
my good friend uh, is also in the audience. Uh, we have had a no, uh, uh, like no, we know, knew, know each other now for so so long, uh, and to be really in the in the area, uh, even presented together at some stage with uh, Vishan and myself in certain ways. Uh, I remember the, doing the first uh, high rise course uh, with uh, uh, Professor Dishan in I think ninety nineties or could be earlier than that. Uh, so uh, like you no know, going our relationship going back. So very good to see Professor Dishan also uh, here. Uh, now in terms of um, I'll be very uh, quick on this uh, uh, to talk about this area. Um, I think today uh, uh, what Dr. Sharnak is going to present is more that we can't see the web and all that and. There are lots of information in the web, uh, a lot of information available, but this is really some unique type of work. Uh, we have a very close partnership uh, with Sanak and myself for going back a uh, long time. And uh, actually, we got uh, two uh, in our group, uh, brilliant students, again, they're all from Sri Lanka, uh, Sadeep and Kanishka here uh, as well, and now Anuradha joining as well as very soon. So, uh, and Pasindu just completed and joining the Porto University. As a lecturer, is a very, really, uh, a very, uh, very, very, uh, very proud of our team. Uh, so this part of part of work will be uh, uh, the reason I'm saying this is a bit weak uh, uh, world in this area that is the going to be higher levels. Uh, thinking, uh, just going, uh, breaking new ground. Uh, we are very conservative now, trying to do uh, really now the uh, don't want to take chances, risk. Uh, and so on. That instead, I had to congratulate. We have been doing all this new type of work as well. Uh, so I had that discussion at that time, uh, having a look at the Paleo labs as well, which is very high quality labs in INSE. Uh, we, I saw that. Uh, so uh, doing uh, lots of work, uh, yeah, at trying to really go to higher level rather than having routine cement and all that. So congratulations to INSE, uh, so Jan and the team. Uh, of course, uh, in say uh, for doing all that. Now, in terms of this work, which is really what is missing in the world, is really going to a higher level and uh, doing a bit of modeling. So, um, what uh, had been our task was to really uh, uh, to uh, be really not just doing the experimental work, uh, going and proving with the highest level of uh, modeling, which is really uh, I had to say that very proud to say that uh, this work is not being done in anywhere in the world now. It's only uh, so very uh, few people doing this, but in one place uh, doing all that work, um, I haven't seen any uh, uh, like um, uh, at the moment in the world. So we are very proud to be there. Uh, the one other thing is that, um, so recognition comes as well. Uh, it was mentioned winning that award. Uh, Dr. Sharnak has done so well uh, winning that uh, excellence award in Australia uh, for the groundbreaking 150 MPA. Concrete, he will explain to all that. Uh, and then more, more also is to really uh, publish in the higher, the best journal in the world, which is nature. Uh, to get into the nature is not easy. Uh, so uh, this work got through to the nature, which is really showing that recognition around the world. So uh, so uh, really um, where we are focusing now a bit more is also uh, uh, rather than just uh, like get into the modeling, highest level in the modeling, which is really, uh, Sharnak will explain a bit more. So I'll be a bit silent uh, from here on, uh, but uh, because uh, the highlight and very qualified, highly qualified, I have to say that doing so much work at um, Dr. Sharnak, very, very active person. So he's the best person to present this as well. So I'll leave it to Dr. Sharnak to present rather than myself talking. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Brian. Uh, you, you were too humble uh, to say that uh, like uh, I got the award, but actually we both got the award. So together with all the work we did. So, <laughs> uh, so uh, I will share the screen. Um, right. Right. Can you, uh, can you see the screen? Can everybody see this screen? Yes, yes, uh, yes Dr. Shanaka. Yes. Yeah, so uh, then uh, thank you everyone. So with that, I would like to start the presentation. Uh, so pr uh, Professor also gave uh, like a good, uh, like a summary on uh, what we are going to present today as a team. And also I think Jan, uh, Jan I think I have to tell you like you, you, you have gone through the, the, the presentation and you have actually uh, uh, grabbed the essence of the presentation. And I think you explained it very well, like uh, what we are going to present. And I think you also have understood the importance, like uh, uh, like uh, 
like a modeling and uh, uh, like studying the concrete uh, from bigger scale to the, the nano scale. So I would say this uh, today presentation uh, more like a journey uh, inside uh, uh, to the concrete. So, so uh, we know we have seen the concrete, but we have seen in the structure scale, uh, we have seen it in like a small cylinder scale, but I, 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 think, I have to disturb. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, would you mind uh, try to put it on the uh, presentation mode because uh, we can see, but not in the presentation mode. Is that okay? Give me a second. Yes. We can see the notes as well. So that's. Ah, is that okay. Ah, okay? Okay. Give me a second. It should be right on there. How, how, how is now then? Is it all right? Yeah. Now it's okay. It's yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. That, now oh, it's perfect. Lovely. Yeah, so, uh, so it will be a journey uh, to the, into the concrete uh, uh, from macro scale to the nano scale. Even we will go, we will, today we will go to the, the molecular level of concrete, like uh, you, we will explore the concrete in different level, different scale, uh, using different uh, uh, like a modeling uh, methods. So uh, then uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the team. So this is a big team, uh, you can see uh, so you know the Professor Priyan well, so then the, the third, you can see the picture there, Kanishka, then Sadeep and uh, Associate Professor uh, Son uh, from Macquarie University and uh, uh, Dr. Lee. Uh, they are great uh, uh, researchers in Australia. I think uh, with them, like with the collaboration actually led to many inventions and new finding and some, 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 some finding revolutionized the concrete industry. That's what we are going to do. You will see the work that we have been doing in, uh, like, in one example, in nano scale, the doing nano modification for concrete. Uh, I'm quite sure that can uh, that can be the ground breaking things in the the future. Uh, so uh, this is the team. Uh, uh, Kanishka and Sadi, they are the PhD students. So they have they, actually what we are presenting today is like a, the very hard work uh, of them. They have been working on uh, like these things for last three years and Anuradha, I think probably she may be in the, the audience as well. She, she will be joining our team. Uh, and also as Professor also mentioned, like uh, uh, the work that, some work we have done here is like the, we are the only uh, the group in the world who developed uh, these new techniques and new theories here. Uh, and also we our research even published in Nature, Nature uh, Scientific Report is, a, is the uh, world's well-recognized uh, uh, like a journal and also it's, it's not easy to get into the nature level uh, in civil engineering, but we did that because of these innovations. So uh, with that, um, I would like to uh, give a, uh, uh, the summary on today's presentation. So uh, the, in the first uh, the session, like the, I would like to discuss uh, uh, like a, our some experiment program that we carried out with Holcim. Uh, now it's Holcim Lafarge in Australia because Holcim and Lafarge like they 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 join uh, with Holcim to develop like a ultra high strength concrete uh, for especially for the filing applications because in Australia the filing capacity is uh, mainly uh, governed by the concrete capacity because the soil is really good, they don't have a water table. So the weathering of the rock is minimum or negligible. So because of that, uh, the pile capacity is like uh, mainly governed by the, uh, the strength of the concrete. So they want to do like a developer, like a economical, like a financially feasible, like a cheaper uh, ultra uh, strength concrete, somewhere around 120 uh, megapascal. So we develop 150, 160 megapascal concrete. Uh, but the challenge was like uh, the, the getting the right aggregate because that's the best way of like make the, making the cost down. Uh, we know that we can develop the uh, ultra high strength concrete using the, the like uh, just the binder, but it's expensive. So we want to make it like a financially feasible. So the, 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 ne the next uh, section is about uh, the macro and micro structure of concrete. So we know that we, we build, uh, structures using concrete, but we, our understanding of, of the structure inside the concrete is uh, uh, lacking. So in, that, in this section, uh, I would like to discuss uh, uh, what is the macro and micro structure of concrete. So the macro means that we are talking about the large, large scale, the aggregate scale. Then 
how to model these uh, uh, the different levels using uh, 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 three uh, different scale called meso, uh, the macro and nano, nano level. Uh, then finally, I will uh, I will be discussing how this uh, modeling text text uh, the techniques can be used to develop uh, ultra high performance concrete and also modify the concrete in different scale in nano scale, macro scale, and meso scale. So this the 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 this framework that we develop develop actually uh, can be applied into uh, many concrete uh, many con uh, types of concrete. Uh, using many types of cons uh, constitute or the supplementary materials or additives. So there's no boundary of this framework once it coupled with the hydration model. Uh, the finally, then we will discuss uh, the, all the, the nano uh, scale work that we are currently doing in, the, uh, the, in our research group to come up with the innovative and uh, high performance concrete uh, using the nano modification. So that's the, the, uh, the summary of the presentation. Uh, so uh, the, uh, you can as seen in this, uh, the, the slides. So the world is going to, um, towards like a taller building, like a, uh, the, the, the mankind or the, uh, we always like to push the boundaries. Like uh, we know the Burj Khalifa is the, uh, the tallest, but we know like the one kilometer uh, tower is coming in, coming in the Middle East. So, so we are pushing uh, the heights, the limits of structures. Uh, and also uh, we, we need the, the material. We have to develop the, the material to withstand the, the challenges. Uh, for example, like uh, we can see like uh, uh, the co concrete strength uh, need for this, uh, the structures is, 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 is higher. So we need high performance concrete, we need the high strength concrete, uh, and also the, uh, the workability uh, of this concrete to be pumped to like uh, 500, 600 meters high is challenging. Uh, not only the material, even the equipment, uh, uh, but Maisa, for example, they have developed like, uh, like the pumping machine, particularly considering these uh, uh, the iconic structure. So what's happening? Because of the advances, like in the, our structural engineering and, uh, in, uh, and also advances in our knowledge, uh, what's happening? The industry is like demanding for high performance material and a, a high strength material. So, uh, and also the advantages of the these uh, high performance uh, materials is like it can drastically reduce the construction cost. Uh, and also the, uh, it can drastically reduce even the, the section sizes. Uh, without this high performance or the uh, and high strength concrete, even building this tall building is, a, is not a possibility uh, because uh, even the section sizes may be very large, even it may reduce the, the, occup the, the space uh, for the, the, the occupant areas uh, significantly. So, uh, so when you say uh, high performance uh, concrete, uh, it means like uh, it's not high strength concrete. That's the most important thing we have to keep it in mind. High performance means it can have a better performance than the normal, uh, the concrete. Uh, with respect to its strength, stiffness, it, it can be like a low in shrinkage and creep. The durability may be better uh, or its workability may be better. And also there's a new uh, condition uh, which is added to this high, high performance concrete and is the emission. So we know like the eight to 10%, uh, if, if I'm carrying six, some, six to 8% uh, of the global emission is coming from the cement industry. That's a big challenge for the cement industry as well as the construction industry in the future because of the climate change. And we know that it's inevitable. Uh, uh, it's an inevitable fact that uh, we have to achieve the net zero uh, goals in, uh, in, in the future after probably like uh, 20 years, uh, after 20 years. Uh, that's something inevitable. So the cement industry is like a, has a huge challenge. I'm, I'm quite sure Jan and the 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 the, the other the, the the members in this panel from INSI they, they would have even heard about these things. It's happening now. For example, like uh, uh, there was a, like a lecture in, uh, in in here in Melbourne organized by Concrete Institute of Australia. The topic was about future of concrete. So then I also subscribed and actually I participated in that lecture. 
I was expecting like uh, talks on the nano uh, to like, uh, you know, like the, the new additives, something like, but you never believe 95% of the, the lecture was about reducing the emission in the, uh, the, the cement industry. So that's a big challenge. Actually, uh, that's that's the area also, that's the area like we have done many studies, but unfortunately I'm not uh, spend, uh, like spending time on that, but you can find our publications, like uh, the work we have uh, we have done in that that, that domain. So uh, then, uh, so if I give you like a brief, uh, like outline of the, the concrete, uh, uh, it can be basically divided into like uh, four categories as shown in this slide. So we know the normal strength concrete, we have good understanding. Now uh, we know high strength concrete, we use, we use that for the structures. Uh, getting something more than 50 is not a challenge anymore with the, so all the super plasticizers uh, and the silica fumes. So that changed, the, uh, uh, that changed a lot in the industry. Uh, because uh, with the lower, uh, sorry, with the uh, super plastic sizes, we can easily reduce the water to cement ratio and uh, further the whatever the voids in the micro uh, structure or micro scale can be filled using the silica film. So that we can easily achieve somewhere around 50 to 100. But the challenge is uh, how to get strength around 100 to 150 using the aggregates and the, the naturally available or natural resource aggregates. Then uh, we can uh, we can develop, we can uh, produce uh, the concrete, something more than uh, even 150 megapascal. Uh, we call this reactor powder concrete. I think um, uh, the Lafa, uh, the, there, there are companies very famous for uh, uh, this type of cements. Uh, very popular in Europe as well uh, because of uh, precast, like the bridges, precast, uh, the, like the structures. So th that, 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 that can be developed uh, without aggregates because the aggregate is the weak link in the concrete, particularly the, uh, the interface between uh, aggregate and the, the mortar, which we call uh, ITZ, interfacial transition shown. So, so uh, this ultra high strength concrete, the reactive powder concrete, uh, it's a basically a powder. Uh, uh, it's only a powder, there's no uh, uh, aggregates there. So even it can achieve 800 megapascal uh, using a special like the curing method. So the researchers, they have even achieved 800 megapascal. So that's the, the uh, that's where even we can uh, go. However, the, the cost is the, the problem because we are not using the, uh, the aggregates. Uh, the, the, the cost is really high because it's purely consists of the binder and also it's include um, expensive uh, additives such as silica fumes and also uh, uh, a lot of cements. So that's expensive. So that's why uh, the reactive powder concrete is not uh, popular. It's not very popular in the uh, uh, institute construction and also in uh, buildings. But uh, but in Japan they have they have used uh, uh, reactive powder concrete for the taller building applications. But cost is the the main problem. So, uh, so our, uh, this research that I'm going to present is more on how to achieve uh, uh, strength between 100 to 150 megapascal using economical mixed designs. So economical mixed designs mean using the blend, blended cement. So even Yan and uh, uh, I think uh, Yan especially mentioned about uh, INSEE also has a blended uh, cement. So I think this presentation will be a, a good uh, uh, example uh, to show that how blended cement can be used, even sustainability and uh, cost efficiently used to produce uh, uh, very high strength concrete, even uh, something around 100 to 150 million. Because we also use the blended cement because uh, using a uh, high amount of cement is uh, not possible uh, because of the heat of hydration. So we, we have to blend it uh, due to the, uh, to reduce the heat of hydration as well as reduce the cost uh, of the mix. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, so 100 to 150 megapascal, we can produce using the natural aggregate, but we can't produce something more than uh, usually uh, using uh, the natural aggregate. So if you produce something more than 150 megapascal, we, we have to exclude the aggregate. So but, but if you're going to uh, develop something more than 100 megapascal, the, the critical factor is the aggregate. 
because uh, the the quality of aggregate is so important. If there's a defect or there's a uh, if if the, uh, if the if the aggregate consistency uh, is not similar, that really caused the uh, uh, the strength. Uh, for example, like uh, sand is like a uh, very consistent. Like when you when we when we test the or when we uh, get sa sand sample, they they they, they are they're made of quartz. So they are the mechanical property is very consistent and very uniform, but if we resource aggregate from a, a quarry, well, it may not have the same consistency. In, for example, like one aggregate may have a different property, other aggregate has a different. So that's a really a challenge when you are going to make a very high strength concrete because this the, the defective aggregates can create the failure that then it initiate the, the entire, uh, the failure of the concrete, uh, sub, uh, consequently reduce the, uh, the strength of the, the concrete. So we know that, uh, there are uh, a few critical factors uh, uh, affecting the strength of the, uh, the high strength concrete. So if you want to um, uh, develop a high strength concrete, the, the ma major th these are the major uh, uh, factors that we have to consider. The first thing that we know is reducing water to binder ratio is important. So we know that water to binder ratio represent uh, the, the content of binder and also the water. So we know that when the content is binder is uh, the higher, uh, we know uh, it's good. But the thing is when we add the water, uh, what will happen, even though it like uh, help the reaction, it creates the, the voids the, 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 in the, the concrete. So the water actually is a medium uh, to start the reaction and uh, uh, and uh, to 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 uh, to help the precipitation process. So we know the water is actually not uh, it, it it doesn't become like a part of the uh, the structure, but it's basically precipitate the calcium uh, uh, silic uh, silicate. So the whatever the water actually it it it, it can remain as a, like a, a void uh, to the structure. That's why when we increase the water to binder ratio. It will increase the uh, the void, whatever the void or the we call it porosity inside the concrete. When the porosity is high, uh, the strength is lower. That's the obvious thing. When the porosity is high, uh, the strength also like uh, uh, exponentially uh, reduced. So then the one other factor is the, what is the the coarse aggregate, and the, the, another factor is the packing of material uh, to reduce the void. So. As I mentioned, the water create the voids, water, water create the concrete porous. Uh, and also if the materials are not packed properly uh, or they, they are not settled or they are, they, 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 they are not um, uh, properly uh, uh, packed within, within the, uh, in the, in the, the concrete mix, what will happen? It can create voids in between. So the packing is uh, very important. We usually use uh, the packing algorithm to uh, create the best, uh, the composition uh, uh, to get a dense pack, a dense mix. So for that, like we analyze the uh, uh, particle si size distribution curves and uh, we have the algorithm, then we run it, then the, the algorithm give what is the, the percent, the best percentages between the, uh, the material to get the, the best, uh, uh, the packing uh, density. Then the cement, of course, is a, a critical factor. The grade of the cement. Uh, then the I, I would say the another most uh, uh, important criteria is the silica fumes. We know uh, uh, even even though we we pack it properly, even though we reduce the water to bind ratio, it's still there are like a lot of uh, porosity in the structure, in the especially in micro scale. In the presentation, when I will show like uh, how much concrete is porous actually, it's porous than we think. So this microfilter, silica fumes actually fill the, uh, the micro gaps in between these particles and uh, increase the strength. So, uh, and also we know when we reduce the water to bind ratio, uh, it become a very cohesive mix. Uh, so that's why you need the chemical like the water reducing admixtures to gain the workability. So these are the, the main criteria uh, to achieve the high strength. But as I mentioned, uh, the uh, the aggregate is playing an important role like in very high strength concrete. Uh, for example, if you see these pictures, these these uh, the concrete sample is uh, 
uh, uh, like this concrete sample strength is more than uh, 100 megapascal. But if you see the, these pictures, you will clearly see there's a difference in failure relative to the normal high strength concrete. So if we, you see it like a close up, you can see how aggregate is crushed. In normal strength concrete, usually the, this failure is goes around the aggregates. So the, the ITZ is very weak in normal uh, strength concrete because of the higher water to binder ratio. So around the aggregate area, due to sometimes uh, uh, like a, like a, uh, the reaction is not happening properly. So because of that, the ITZ, ITZ means the interface between the binder and the aggregate is really big. So the failure goes around the aggregate. But when, when, if, when it comes to high strength concrete, actually failure goes through the aggregate. So there's a difference uh, in the failure. So from that, we have to understand the aggregate is playing an important role in uh, the high strength concrete because it's going through the aggregate. So the aggregate is strength and its properties also matter to gain the, uh, the highest strength. So, so from our studies, like what we found, so it's very important to have the proper aggregate. So we, we, we actually, uh, uh, oh, sorry, this is the, uh, the failure of like a normal strength aggregate. So you can clearly see the aggregates are no, not broken. Uh, the, the failure has gone around the aggregate. So you can, that's a uh, the big difference in the failure pattern. So, uh, so from our, so uh, the preliminary study, so what we found, so we have to work uh, on the aggregates if you go, go, want to push this 100 megapascal boundary. So we, we actually Holcim and we uh, did the, like a, a lot of trials to find like what is a suitable aggregate, what is the dependency of the aggregate uh, relative to the, the compressive strength and the lasting mo mo modulus. Uh, and also uh, understand uh, what, what is the, the, the mechanism uh, of, uh, what is the mechanism happening inside the ultra high strength concrete with this natural aggregate. So I, I will uh, briefly tell what we did. So be, uh, because we found this aggregate playing uh, uh, important role. So Holcim actually had a lot of uh, uh, the quarries around Victoria. So we, we collected all the, uh, the aggregates. So then we ran, ran a, uh, we tried, tried a different types of aggregate like basalt, granite, rhodocyte, andesite, hornfield. They are the strongest aggr aggregates. Uh, in the world, uh, especially the basso, the, 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 these are like the uh, igneous, uh, uh, the drops. Um, then, uh, right. Then uh, actually from the trial, we found like uh, the, the bas like the basalt is giving a good result, but, but, but for the comparison purposes, like we use the granite as well. Uh, so I just want to give a, like a, a brief, like a, a like a, a understanding on the material properties. So, so the basalt aggregate actually has a, a 300 megapascal strength. The granite had 100 megapascal strength. Elastic modulus wise is like a 80 megapascal for basalt and the granite uh, is 50 megapascal. So you will see like a, like a difference um, uh, in the properties, even rela related to the concrete as well. So concrete strength, let's say it's 100 megapascal in 100 megapascal. So the elastic modulus is around 40 megapascal. So you can see the, the strength and elastic modulus of the, 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 the aggregates. It's uh, quite, it's quite dif different for basalt, but in the same uh, uh, similar level uh, for gr granite. Uh, and also uh, we did like, uh, in order to find the elastic modulus of our, uh, the, uh, the aggregate, what we did, like we carried out like a nano scale, uh, like a characterization, we call this nano indentation. So we like, a, like basically uh, indent the aggregate samples and we got the elastic modulus. So for a basalt, you can see uh, the elastic modulus is around like 100 to uh, 80 to 100. So this is the, uh, the cement phase. But if you look at the cement phase, the elastic modulus is somewhere around here. So you, we can see, clearly see the difference uh, the, uh, in, in compatibility as well. 
So in between the aggregates and the, uh, uh, the cement uh, paste. Uh, but if you, this is the, uh, the granite aggregate, but you, we can clearly see the elastic modulus uh, were around uh, 60 to 40, somewhere around. So, so from that analysis, like we clearly understood like uh, the, the, the difference, like a significant difference in the, the properties of the aggregate. Uh, uh, even though they are like the igneous rocks, like if they, they are like it's coarse aggregate, but they, they, they have totally different uh, characteristics. Uh, then uh, this is the mix that uh, we came up with. So uh, I thought of like showing this one uh, because uh, you can clearly see it's a blend, blended cement, sorry, blended uh, uh, mix. We use the cement, uh, fly ash, slag, silica fume, and nano silica as well, only for a one mix. So you can see the, the binder content is like 800, uh, but we use only uh, around like 500 kilograms of cement. So uh, the, around 40% is like the, the, the supplementary cementitious material. Uh, only 60% uh, is the, the cement. So th that's help us to like reduce the cost as well as the, the emission as well, reduce the emission because the fly ash, sag, uh, silica film, they are the byproduct uh, from coal, uh, steel and uh, uh, electronic industry. So even uh, Jan mentioned like the, the, the blended cement. So, so like uh, if people have the doubts about the blended cement, I think this is a good example because we achieved even somewhere around like 140 to 160 using this blend. So the aggregate content, you can see it's really high. So that's the other, other the secret, reducing the cost. And we have used uh, the uh, water reducing ag ag admixtures and also viscosity modifiers and the uh, retarders because uh, it has to uh, it has to retain its slump uh, uh, for uh, like uh, around like two to three hours. So uh, I would like to show video showing the the workability. Uh, so when we achieve the the high strength, like uh, at the same time we have to achieve the the workability because yeah, they have to be pumped. Yeah. Uh, wow. Wow. Seven news, nine news. So it's almost like a self-compacting self compacting concrete. Uh, the, the spread was around like uh, uh, somewhere around like uh, 600, 700 okay. uh, millimeters. It comply the, the standards. So this is a daring test that uh, uh, evaluates the uh, 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 workability, the passing yes, ability and the slum retention of the uh, uh, the self-compacting concrete. So the workability uh, is measured uh, by the, the diameter of the, the spread. Passing ability is measured by uh, uh, the concrete going through this, uh, the, the reinforcement that shows how, how the, whether the concrete can go through the reinforcement. And the sump retention is uh, uh, me measured after three hours. So, uh, Right, so the flow ability, it was spread was like 720 millimeters and uh, pass inability was, should be something less than 10 millimeters. So it's satisfied. Some uh, retention at three hours was like satisfactory. It should be around like uh, uh, 500. So we, not only the spread, like uh, we were able to achieve the, uh, uh, the workability requirement as well. So this is the strength and the, the elastic modulus, like uh, we can see like around 56 days around 28 days, we were able to achieve 140, 56 days, like we were uh, able to achieve 150 and 91 days, it's 160. Uh, it's because of the, the blended mix. Uh, if you are using this concrete in like a tall building or uh, even piling application, uh, we can you we can like design it for like 56 days, not only 28 days, because uh, 28 days, like if you design the concrete for 28 days, it may be not economical because of the, the blend. Because of the blend, uh, we may not achieve the, uh, the full strength by 28 days. So better give some time uh, for the, uh, the additives or the supplementary cementitious material to gain strength. Because we know that uh, silica fume and uh, sl uh, slag, they are, uh, their reaction is a bit slow. Uh, because uh, the silica, uh, silica uh, fly ash react with the, the calcium hydroxide, then the slag also has the cementitious properties because of the calcium oxide uh, within it. 
So better to give some, give some time and uh, probably target the uh, mix for like a 56 day. What we found like uh, around 28 days, it, it achieved 70% of its strength. So still there's a 30% uh, that we can gain. Uh, then elastic modulus, like uh, it's, it was very consistent, like uh, even with the time, uh, it was, it's like a more than 50. So we achieved like somewhere around 52, 53 megapascal. So we know normal strength concrete, like uh, uh, elastic modulus is like uh, around like uh, 20, uh, 20, 25, 30, somewhere around there. But uh, this high strength concrete, we can clearly see it's a double the, uh, the value of a normal strength concrete. So this will reduce the actual shortening significantly. This is a critical thing in uh, tall building, uh, like uh, reducing the, uh, uh, the actual shortening, uh, the deformation, so I can, I, 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 so for example, I saw like uh, uh, the drawing of this one kilometer, uh, the tower in, uh, uh, I think, Saudi Arabia. Uh, they, if you look at the drawing, they have specified two things. The first, first thing is the strength. The other thing is like the uh, elastic modulus because of this actual shortening and the deformation. So when we specify the high strength concrete, like we have to achieve uh, two things, the strength and the, the elastic modulus. So that's why it's, it's really important to use the right aggregate because if you, if you use the right aggregate, we can get the, uh, the right strength and also the elastic modulus. So then uh, what we did actually, we analyzed uh, the correlation or the, what is the effects of aggregate uh, for the, its uh, uh, elastic modulus. So we, we actually collected like uh, all uh, like the, the data in, in, in all around the, the, uh, the world. Actually, we, we collected around 500 data. Then we run the analysis. What is the correlation of uh, like a compressive strength, density of concrete and density of aggregate to the elastic modulus of uh, ultra high strength concrete. Then uh, we considered that for different uh, strength scales. So uh, for example, 50 to 75, 75 to 100, 100, 125, and 125 to 150. So then what we found when for a 100 to 150 range, the effect of uh, the density of aggregate and the, uh, the, the density of concrete has a higher effect on, on the elastic modulus. So uh, we know the elastic modulus is like uh, uh, defined uh, using the uh, uh, strength strength uh, and the density of concrete in our course. But what we found for the, uh, for the ultra high strength concrete, we have to even think about including the uh, aggregate properties, aggregate density uh, in order to find elastic, elastic model. Actually we developed like an equation and we published that, uh, uh, the, uh, these new equations. Uh, and we compared with the different codes and uh, uh, we came up with the, uh, uh, new uh, design equation to calculate the uh, elastic modulus. And similarly, uh, uh, then we, we try to find what is the relationship of uh, aggregates to the compressive strength. So we plotted uh, water to bind ratio versus the compressive strength. We know the water to bind the ratio is the critical factor for the compressive strength. So we can clearly see when the water to bind ratio is like uh, reducing, uh, the strength is increasing significantly in an exponential way. We know that it's a uh, well-proven uh, re relation. And also you can see that the, for the different aggregates, there's a, uh, this like a, uh, for the different aggregate, you can get different spread. For example, if, if you use basalt, this is our, our data set, it, it has got a better result. For example, bauxite. Bauxite is a, a natural occurring aggregate with higher aluminum content. That it's very dense aggregate. So you can see we can we can go beyond this curve if we use the right uh, aggregate. Uh, then uh, what we did, uh, we also did the same analysis, and we found that for a very high strength concrete, the, the density of aggregate really matters. Then we actually came up with this equation to design the, the high strength concrete. So we incorporate uh, the aggregate effects uh, there. So this can be a very simple equation, like uh, to like uh, the practitioners in the industry, uh, the, in the material engineers, 
to start like uh, or to know the what is the right water to bind ratio what is the aggregate uh, this is like a preliminary like this step uh, step to uh, develop high strength concrete uh, this doesn't mean you will get this strength uh, because it also depend on many other parameters like the right silica film uh, right fly ash you may we can use this uh, class of c fly ash from let's say norocholi class c fly ash from let's say thailand another uh, like a uh, power plant in Thailand, but we may not get the same result. So it's a complex thing like uh, the strength, but this can be like a si very simple equation uh, to, to start or to start to produce high strength concrete. So, and also if you look at this graph, though, uh, we plotted this uh, data in this using this equation, you can clearly see this is the, the orange is the granite. In Sri Lanka, we have a lot of granites. Uh, um, unfortunately, my knowledge on other uh, the type of aggregate is very uh, very limited uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, for Sri Lankan contest. You, you can see if you use granite, no one has go beyond this point. The people who use uh, bauxite or the uh, basalt, they have uh, they have gone beyond this point, 125 megapascal. So th this is also like a good uh, indication like we have to use the right aggregate to push this boundary. And also uh, uh, we can see if you use some, some type of aggregate, it can reduce the, the strength. So this, using this ag right aggregate is quite important to get the, uh, uh, the final result. It, uh, you can, we can actually design a very good binder, even if it can be really expensive, but if you don't blend it with the right aggregate, we are not going to get the right, like the the best out of the binder uh, in in, 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 in re related to very high strength concrete. So uh, I think with that, uh, for finally to obtain so according to this equation to obtain very high strength uh, around 150 megapascal, let's say within 90 days, uh, water to binder ratio of 0.2 has to be used. Then uh, the concrete density. So we have to pack the concrete. So, so that it, the final density should be 2,650. Uh, then the aggregate density should be around something around 3,000 3, kilograms per cubic meter. So, so if you're going to select the aggregate, so this density, uh, some, uh, some, uh, having an uh, aggregate density around 2,800 to 3,000 can be really helpful to gain this strength. And also you can see the density of concrete has to be somewhere around 2,650. We know no, no, the normal, normally the concrete, the density uh, is 2,430. That's what we uh, use for this, the calculation. So you can see the high strength concrete is like a 200 or 200 kilograms actually heavier than the normal strength concrete. So the, the potential aggregate is like basalt, calcine, bauxite, diabetes, andesite. So, those are those are the like the uh, igneous rock with the density around like uh, 3000 to 2800 2900 so i think uh, then uh, uh, finally we can conclude like uh, selecting the suitable aggregates like we can uh, we can achieve actually easily achieve the very high strength concrete using economical binders um, then uh, these properties like the hardened and the fresh properties like uh, depend on the aggregate properties then uh, most importantly, like uh, the code equation, like they are not suitable to find the uh, elastic properties or even to predict the strength of very high strength concrete. Like uh, we have to revise this equation. So if you are really interested, like uh, the, the, we have published this information, you should be able to find that in our like uh, profiles in the Google scholars, if you search that. Right, then, uh, Then, uh, so we did a uh, lot of experiment actually. So actually a whole sim did a lot of uh, trial ex experiment. Once they found the aggregate, like uh, then we, we did the mixed designs uh, for them, like uh, uh, doing the, all the packing uh, algorithm. Uh, we, we gave them the, uh, the mixed designs. Uh, finally, we achieved the strength. But the thing is like uh, that, that, that program was like a one year program because uh, we, we had to wait until 56 days to get the result. Uh, and a lot of uh, parameters, like a uh, lot of types of aggregate sizes and uh, different types of sand. 
and they use different type of silica fumes, ultra fine silica fumes and the fly ash from different sources because Australia has a, a lot of uh, coal power plants. So they resourced uh, fly ash from uh, different uh, power plants. Uh, but finally they found the, Gla the Glaxton fly ash. It's from the uh, coal power plant in Glaston area is suitable and also slack. Also same, they tried uh, slack from different supply. It was like a quite quite strenuous, like a like a it's a difficult, uh, uh, time consuming, co co like a costly process. And also, finally, uh, if you want to develop like a if you want to develop like a relationship, it it's quite different difficult because the reason is like uh, to even come up with the equation or to predict, we need a lot of experiment program. That's 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 that, that's not possible to be honest. And also. We, we, we add fly ash, we add uh, silica fumes, like we add uh, slag, we add like a di different amount of cements. However, we don't, didn't know like what's happening inside. That's also like a big problem for us. Like we don't know what's happening. So what is the effect of adding like a silica fume, like in, let's say micro scale? What's the effect of adding like aggregating, let's say in a, in a higher level? Uh, how the porosity actually affects uh, to the final strength. So we didn't know what's happening, what's the mechanism inside this concrete. So we, we, we know how to design structures using concrete, we know how to analyze it, but we don't know how to, what is happening inside the concrete and we don't know how to analyze it. So that's what like, a, uh, like a big question came to our research team. Like, so the, the, as I mentioned earlier, like uh, the concrete, if you, if, you, if you go inside the concrete, the concrete also is structure. It has a, like a lot of structures inside in different scale. Uh, uh, like like uh, in, a, in, in a tall building, uh, it has, let's say the columns, beams. The column beams make a one story. So one story, uh, then uh, when you combine the stories, you get the structure. Likewise, in uh, the concrete also, there are different uh, level, uh, the, the different elements or different scales uh, inside, for example, like if uh, if, if you, you can see the the the, the left hand uh, left hand uh, top uh, top left hand corner, you can see the the cylinders that we have crushed. That they are in like a hundred fifty millimeter scale. If you zoom it, then the actually the the that concrete consists of the aggregates and a, and and a mortar. That's in like a ten millimeter scale. But if you further zoom it. We can see the uh, the cement paste and the the sand is a one millimeter. But then, if we zoom the paste, then we will see the CSH uh, gel and the fly ash, the silica fumes, unreacted slag, unreacted clinker. So that's a that's a that's a microstructure. So so we are talking about the micro scale. And also, if you look at the uh, uh, the graph in the bottom, it's in the log scale, like it's starting from nano to uh, uh, meter scale. Uh, if we start from the, the let's say the, the millimeter scale, the aggregates are right hand side. Then we have the entrapped air voids, so that, that, that's created porosity and the, the entrained air bubble, which couldn't uh, escape when we are vibrating or when it's self compacting. Uh, then, uh, if you go further down, the, our cement particles uh, is uh, somewhere around here, one micrometer to uh, 200, uh, 200 micrometers. So, cement particle here, then uh, fly ash, slag also uh, somewhere around here, then the silica fumes somewhere around here, then uh, calcium hydroxide here. We, we know, like, when uh, cement is hydrated, it produces calcium hydroxide. Then uh, all the CSL gel, they ag aggregate, like they, 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 they uh, uh, the coagulate. So it's there, uh, then the capillary voids, they are, they, even we, we don't see them uh, without uh, the microscope. And if we go, go further down, actually the cement, the CSL gel, actually uh, is the, uh, the, the, the building block of the, uh, the concrete or the, the binder. It's in the nanoscale, the CSL seed. They, 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 they consist as the sheets. So in the nanoscale, so the final, the strength or the elastic modular that we discussed actually is a combination, is a combination of these many things. 
I would say the many scales, uh, many constitutes. So, and also if you look at the, 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 the additives or the constitute that we are adding to concrete also uh, it, it has a different uh, sizes. They are in a different scale. For example, like the, the coarse aggregate, they are in the millimeter scale. Uh, then the natural sand uh, is like in, can be micro scale. Then the, the cement fly ash, they are from one microns to it can vary to 200 microns. Then the silica fumes, they are the, they are the one who fill in the, my, uh, the macro, uh, micro uh, uh, the gaps. It's in the nano to micro scale it's from uh, let's say 100 nanometer or uh, 100 nanometers to like a, a thousand nanometer scale. But if you go further down, then we have the nano silica fumes and the graphene oxide, uh, the carbon nanotubes, they are there. So the, the, the concrete, what we see in, from the eyes, actually it's a, it's a, it's a combination of uh, many materials and it's a combination of uh, different scales. So that's what I want to like uh, mention here. Uh, then the question was like, uh, okay, if they are like a, like a like a consist of different material, they are consist. They can be considered at, uh, from different scale. Then how how to how to understand what is happening in uh, these different scale it was like a research or the the problem came to our mind. So then uh, what we did actually uh, we we like we 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 look at look at, look looked into the the concrete, and actually we found actually concrete is consist of mainly four, four, four levels, four, I would say like the four uh, scales. So uh, uh, the first scale we thought like, it's the, uh, the meso scale, we call it meso or the large scale. It is the, the scale uh, that, that we are talking about, uh, that we are, uh, that's a scale where the aggregates, the sand uh, are. So we are talking about the, like the, the, the concrete, like the, the, the concrete that we see, actually, we, when we look at the concrete, we can see the aggregate, then we can see a, a mortar. So that's the meso level. Uh, then uh, we thought, uh, then uh, break the, uh, the, the concrete uh, to a micro level. Uh, uh, then we divided that into two. So the, the, the second level, is the cement paste. So when we look at the cement paste, like when we see through the SCM, we can, we, we, we see uh, CSS gel. It, it, CSS gel is the reacted uh, cement. Then we still can see the unreacted, uh, the cement in is very high strength concrete because in the very high strength concrete, due to the very low water to binder ratio, the concrete, does, cement doesn't react because it doesn't have enough water. So some of the cement react, it from the CSA gel, we call it CSA gel, calcium silicon hydrate gel. Uh, then we can see the silica fumes unreacted and uh, the fly ash and the pores. Uh, we can see the pores uh, and also silica uh, fly, uh, fly, fly ash as well. So then uh, if, you, if you further focus or further go down uh, or further for like assume the CSA gel or the cement uh, reacted cement, we, we still, See, see the cement matrix and the, the pores. So now we, are, we are, now we are talking about like a 10 into the minus 10 uh, meter. So it's been like even beyond the uh, micro level. This is nano level, little bit na into nano level. Uh, something in between micro and nano. This is the micro level. Uh, then the final stage uh, or the final level is the, uh, the, silic uh, the, uh, the reacted cement. Which, which, which is like a, a silicon calcium hydrate. So which uh, the silicon uh, calcium hydrate uh, is consist of, consist of calcium oxide, silicon dioxide and H2O. So this level is a nano level and this is a molecular level. This is the level that even we can simulate the nano material. We, we can't simulate the nano material in th this level because they are micro level. The nano material is far smaller than that. So if I, if you if I if I like a related uh, the the figure here the the figure in the top right, right uh, top right hand corner uh, the meso the meso scale is the the scale with the aggregate the 
the micro scale is here. I hope you can see the, the mouse. Then the nano scale is here. And also, uh, if you look at the constituent, constituent or the, the, uh, the material that we're adding, so these material, they are in the mesoscale, uh, the supplementary cementitious material and the, the clinker uh, cement, they are in the micro scale and nano material, they are in the nano scale. So, so this is uh, how we divide the concrete into different levels. And this is how we are going to explore concrete in, 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 in the next steps. So, so we try, try to simulate or we try to understand what is happening in these uh, levels and how this, uh, the levels, how it affect the final result. Uh, we can explore that. And also, if we change something in this level, let's say in the nano level, uh, we add um, graphene oxide or we add nano uh, silicon dioxide or we have carbon nanotubes or we develop our own uh, nano material. So what will happen in concrete level? Is that we are, what we are going to do, what we, what we want to know. So that's the strength of uh, this scale modeling. So if we want to add, let's say new additive, like uh, let's say a new uh, a cementitious material, we can do a simulate here, then we can find what is the final result. So especially when we develop in the high performance or high strength concrete, this kind of a framework can be effectively used to, to modify the material or test the existing material or even develop new type of material uh, to get like a, a higher performance uh, uh, for concrete. So now what I'm going to explain like uh, how, how, how we, like, uh, we can like a uh, model, uh, uh, we can simulate these different levels and how we can understand what is happening there and how, how we can use this simulation to improve the properties or even uh, to find the proper aggregate. Like I will start from the, the meso level. So the meso level is the aggregates and the binder. So now the, 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 the experiment program I, I, I explained uh, previously is all about like selecting the suitable aggregate, but we had to do uh, it's a one and half, I think one or no, one and a half year work uh, and uh, with uh, probably uh, 20, 25 trials uh, with a lot of uh, human time, the cost, the materials. But if we develop something like that, we can, th this is the, the virtual lab. This is the, co the computer, computer simulate, simulated lab for, or to select the uh, right aggregate. So, so in mesoscale, what we do, uh, we basically uh, generate the aggregates. Uh, then we uh, like we model it with the binder, and we uh, simulate in the like ad, like a, uh, in computers, like advanced computer uh, mod models, uh, sorry, uh, softwares, and we can predict uh, this the the result. This is the stress strain graphs. So from that we can get what is the lasting modulus, what is the strength, what actually what constitute fail, whether it's the problem in the aggregate, whether the problem is in the, the IT set, the interface between the uh, aggregate and the binder uh, or the motor. So depends on that, we can improve, we can select even like what the best aggregate to blend with the motor property. So we can uh, do that kind of simulation uh, using the uh, uh, method uh, scale modeling. So this work actually, Sadiq, uh, the PhD actually, he. He uh, worked on a lot on uh, mesoscale modeling and uh, he, he did like a, a lot of new things uh, I will explain. So he, he's in like the, pa the panel list. So uh, actually we have to tell like uh, Sadi, uh, the algorithm, like uh, I will explain in the next couple of sites, the, 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 those are really new. Uh, uh, the first time like in the world uh, who developed the algorithm like that to achieve the, the, like the right amount of aggregate because it's not easy to place the aggregate uh, in, inside uh, like a cylinder. Uh, there are a lot of challenges, uh, mathematical challenges. So I think Sadiq solved those uh, challenges uh, and also published available for like uh, if anyone in the world, uh, those data set and uh, everything. So the advantages of mesoscale modeling is like we can easily get the dynamic loading, uh, the elastic um, properties, the strength, the stress rate behavior, the fracture, how the damage uh, start, how it propagate, 
like uh, what is the weaker uh, element of the uh, the composition and also durability is uh, uh, we can uh, analyze uh, so we can uh, uh, simulate the durability through the diffusivity analysis and fluoride penetrations of concrete uh, and also uh, parametric design so we can uh, do a lot of parametric uh, analysis like the aggregate distribution the packing the size type so we can do many things if you are going to do uh, it using the, uh, the experiment program that's really time consuming even you may be spending time uh, 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 for let's say uh, like unsuitable aggregate or unsuitable like uh, uh, materials but th this simulation techniques will narrow down uh, this uh, the the parameters then we can carry out the uh, the experiment so the in meso scale uh, basically there are three components uh, we have to consider is aggregate mortar and what is the interaction or what is the properties between aggregate and mortar it's uh, we call it like interfacial transition zone so there's a if you look at it in the microscope we can clearly see there's a there's a zone in between mortar and aggregate it's not similar to the uh, uh, the mortar because it's 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 reaction is not similar to the mortar because sometimes aggregate absorb the water uh, because of that uh, there's no enough water uh, for the reaction or sometimes there may be too much water some, around the aggregate so the the properties uh, around the aggregate and the mortar is not similar to the mortar so they are, they, because of that there's a weaker zone we call interfacial transition. So the, these are the uh, three things that we have to model in mesoscale. So in mesoscale, actually, uh, first thing is like we have to generate the aggregate. That's that, 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 that's uh, that's also a bit of complex thing, like getting the real aggregate shapes. And we have to place it inside the, uh, the uh, like a cylinder. Uh, that's also like a, a difficult task mathematically because of you can see the compaction because finding a space uh, like empty space uh, is quite difficult without uh, uh, interference uh, with other uh, the adjacent aggregate so then uh, we can uh, assign the right material models then uh, we can mesh it and we, we will do the finite element analysis so this is what actually Sadeep has done and this is also published in uh, uh, American uh, society civil uh, American uh, Society of Civil Engineers, uh, uh, Journal of uh, in Materi uh, Journal, uh, Journal of Material, uh, Civil Engineering Materials, uh, very prestigious journal. So what we did like, but uh, uh, we did like, uh, we scanned the aggregate, then we got the, uh, the shapes, then using the uh, mathematical uh, uh, approach, we call it like a, a, a spherical harmonics. It's very close to like a Fourier series. I think I'm not going to talk about this mathematics. It's also being used in the electronic engineering to simulate the signal. So we use the same type of like a, a approach. We, we use a, a spherical harmonic, that technique to develop like a similar aggregate in an in artificial way. This is this are actually synthetic aggregate. So from that, we develop like a, math, like a, a mathematical model uh, to create like a synthetic aggregate. So th this is how uh, it is generated. When you, when you change the level of the spheric harmonic, it, it, it can uh, uh, get the same similar shape of the, the real aggregate. So fr from that, uh, once we uh, uh, develop that algorithm, it can create uh, different shapes and different size uh, of aggregate uh, without any limitation. Because if you scan the aggregate, like we have to do this scanning for different sizes, different shapes so it's 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 not possibility but we develop like a, a aggregate like synthetic aggregate using math, ma mathematics uh, mathematics so now uh, it's about like a placing i hope uh, you can see the video so this is the placing algorithms uh, that sadeep uh, developed uh, he came up with uh, own uh, uh, algorithms so uh, one of challenge in mesoscale modeling is like a, like a um, like uh, placing the right amount of aggregate uh, be be because of the current uh, limitation, we can't uh, model like a place more than 30 to 35 percent like uh, aggregate there. But with the new algorithm, we were able to like place uh, percentages like around 40 percent. So we achieved the, the right amount of aggregates using this algorithm. Then you can see the the place in uh, we have placed the uh, the 
the aggregates. Uh, also, you can see like we have uh, we, we achieved the 40% uh, volume fraction because as I mentioned earlier, like for, uh, for uh, the mixes that we use, we use a lot of aggregates. Then uh, the simulations, uh, we can simulate uh, what, what's happening inside, then we can get the stress strain graphs, we validated using our results. Then uh, we observe what is the what's what's happening in the failure? So, what's the reason behind the failure of very high strength concrete? So, what we found uh, this is the strength of mesoscale modeling. Now we know what's happening inside. Uh, then we can adjust. So, if we test a concrete cube or we, if we test a concrete sample, we we can't find actually what what went wrong. What is the weakest element? But using the mesoscale modeling, we can clearly visualize. We, we know that we can fix the strain gauges outside this uh, the concrete sample, then we can observe the stress strain curve of concrete sample when we are testing it uh, in, in physically, physically, but we can't see what's happening inside, what's happening in ITZ, because ITZ like a 10 micro, like a two, uh, two, three, four micrometer like a depth, it has a, a thickness. So we can't observe or we can't get the result from IT set when we are testing it. But using the FEM simulations, mesoscale simulation, we were able to like unlock or we to find what is the failure mechanism in the, the concrete. So what we found, the this A is related to the, the damage in IT set. So the actually the failure start from the IT set. So uh, it, IT said in high strength concrete actually better than norm, IT said in normal strength concrete, but still it is the weakest point. So it's not the it's not a problem in uh, mortar. It's not a problem in the ag uh, aggregate, but it's a problem in IT set. So if we can improve the IT set, it means like we can further improve the the strength of concrete. Then the B what we found because of the after the damage at IT set, then we found uh, the damage is propagating around the IT set. Uh, but the, the failure is when the cylinder is failing in a diagonal. So the, 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 the damage can now, the, the, the damage cannot go uh, around the, the aggregate uh, because uh, IT said is, as I mentioned, is stronger. So what will happen then the, the, the damage is like uh, going through the uh, mortar, then it's propagate through the aggregate. Then we we clearly saw uh, the damage. The red, the red, 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 red color is the damage. Uh, it going through the aggregate. So IT said like uh, basically start the uh, the failure. Then it uh, it cannot go around the aggregate because IT is like IT said is like a stronger than the normal strength concrete. Then the damage is uh, propagate to the the mortar. Then uh, it it went through the aggregate. So, so, and also like, uh, as, as you can see here, we can do a lot of parametric study for the different type of aggregate, different shapes and different volumes of aggregate. So now this is like a lab. So the virtual lab, uh, two model concrete in a meso scale. So, so now, now, uh, uh, uh then, uh, I'm go going to explain like uh, the mi micro scale, like uh, what we did in micro scale, uh, what we did to understand uh, and how to model these micro scales. So the micro scale, as I mentioned, it, it, it has the, the cement, uh, so the, the CSA gel, uh, which is the reacted uh, cement. Then it has unreacted cement. It has silica fumes. It has fly ash. And also it has the, the pores, poros, por 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 pores. And also, uh, if you further uh, assume uh, CSA gel, we can see the CSA gel also has a lot of pores. So the, then the question, uh, so for, for that scale, what we are doing, uh, because this is a micro scale, so we can't model uh, anything like, because it's a very small scale, we can't even see that. So we can't, uh, we can simulate a cylinder as it is, but micro scale is very small. So we can't uh, simulate uh, like, like a concrete uh, cylinder because it is like an embedded, it's a, it's a small uh, part embedded in the concrete. 
So the technique that we are using something called uh, representative volume element. So what we will do, we will take a small piece of that uh, uh, the volume, and we 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 give the uh, right boundary condition, right condition around it because it's embedded. Because not like a cylinder, cylinder is like a standalone. But if you take like a micro, like a length element of that uh, the paste or paste, for example. It's surrounded by many other things. So when we are simulating it, uh, what we what we have to do is like we have to take a small piece and we have to give the right condition around it. So this technique called uh, relative volume element. So we use that technique, and uh, as you see, then we model the uh, the different like the phases. Like it can be uh, clinker, it can be silica film, it can be fly ash. Uh, with the CSF gel, we simulate it. Uh, that's what we do. So this also like uh, Sadib, uh, the Sadib did a lot of uh, uh, work on this one. So then uh, the re we, we can re we can uh, represent that microstructure uh, like this using the re representative volume element. So for example, these different colors actually represent different phases, uh, uh, but they are embedded. They are inside the uh, CSA gel. So this is the, for example, this is the 10 micrometer representative volume element uh, for a, a, a like a macro macro structure with a clinker, uh, calcium hydroxide, slag, uh, and porosity. And this is a representative uh, like a volume element for a mortar. Uh, it has only sim, uh, sand embedded in a cement paint with void. Uh, likewise, we can uh, represent uh, the microstructure using the uh, uh, this technique called uh, representative volume element, but with the right boundary conditions, because they are always, there's something uh, around around them. So the, then uh, this is example like uh, uh, with different different phases, we call it inhomogeneities, like a concrete is a, uh, 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 it, it, it has, it is a heterogeneous material with many components. So we have to represent different material with, within that. So we can, from uh, our modeling techniques, we can represent uh, like a representative volume element with different phases. So if like a, this is like a, for example, like a, like a volume with only one inclusion. Uh, this is with the two in, 25 inclusions, something like that. So we can include uh, many phases as we need. Uh, and also as shown here, like when we can change the shapes depending on the, uh, material for example fly ash we know it's like a circular shape slag more irregular like a polyhedral uh, silica film is also a sphere so we can model the different shapes as well so then the question is how to get the properties uh, for this simulation because we know like we have to input the we have to give the input input is the the properties of these pa uh, the faces so uh, for a for a this is this is the challenge actually we had so how to uh, calculate like how how can we like uh, measure the properties at uh, mi mi micro scale uh, we are talking about the one micrometer two micrometer three micrometer uh, or if we go to the nano level how we can how, how are we going to measure the properties in nano scale which is like one nanometer or several nanometers uh, this wasn't a problem for a mesoscale. For example, in mesoscale, we uh, we uh, simulated uh, the cement phase, so, sorry, mortar and the aggregate. We can measure the compressive strength, elastic modulus of mortar, uh, mortar and the elastic uh, and the, the rocks easily, because we can do the uniaxial compressive test, uh, and we can evaluate the the strength and the elastic modulus. We have like the we call macro the large scale test to evaluate the strength of let's say the concrete or the mortar or the aggregates we have that ability but if we go if we going into the macro like the micro scale it's a it's a one uh, like a hundred times uh, smaller than or even more than that smaller than the aggregate aggregate or the concrete so how we are going to get the properties because if you want to simulate that we, we should know what is the properties there so that's the the problem the, the world has actually, the world has that problem actually. We are the people who, who, who solved that actually. Actually, we have to be very proud of, our, of ourselves uh, as, a, as like, a, like a Sri Lanka as well, like a team of Sri Lankans actually developed the, 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 these, uh, the, the new techniques uh, with the collaboration of course, like the, with the Macquarie University team there. 
So, so this is how the, 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 the invention in there, the novelty in there is like how to get the properties, how to get the properties in of this microstructure. So this is what I'm going to uh, explain. So the, the, the pictures that you are seeing here is like the, the SCM images, uh, actually e, uh, with EDX. Uh, EDX means it's uh, find the what is the, the 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 minerals or the chemical composition in there as well. That's why you see them in a different colors. So if you zoom in, like zoom the the, the concrete or your the, the the cement paste, this is what we see. So this this is the aggregate you can see, and that's IT set here. Uh, very thin uh, IT set for uh, very high strength concrete, but for a normal strength concrete, you will see a thicker uh, IT set, then uh, you will see the fly ash particle here, the, the circular particle, we know fly ash is circular, it's like it's like a ball, the, the ball bearings, that's why when we add the fly ash, like it increased the, uh, the workability, then uh, th there's an unreacted cement particle, uh, you can see it's, uh, it's a bit lighter uh, than the, uh, uh, the other, other particles, then uh, the slag, it's, it's irregular shape, and silica fumes, I don't know whether you can see, it's a very small, tiny piece here. Like, I, I don't know whether you can see the mouse. It's very tiny. From that, you can understand the, the tininess of uh, silica fumes. It's very tiny and fill the micro gaps. Uh, uh, then uh, then the, the, the whatever in between is the uh, cement gel. And also we can see calcium hydroxide as well. So then, so this is what we can from uh, see from a microscope, but the thing is, it doesn't give any property. It just uh, characterize the uh, the chemical composition, or it show us what is there, what is the particle. But it doesn't give any uh, mechanical property. Uh, right then, uh, then, then uh, I, as I mentioned. Uh, depends on the the chemical uh, the the composition. It has a different grayscale. So what we did, uh, we doing image analysis, the image processing analysis. Actually, we 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 found like what is the composition of the voids. The voids are the darkest part. So if you see the uh, the, the 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 darkest uh, part here, the, the the black black side is the the porosity. So we found the porosity. And also we can find like what is the uh, the amount of the slags or the unreacted clinker in there. So we can find the uh, the different like the materials, but still we can't find the the mechanical properties. So but porosity is really important because we have to model that we, we should know porosity right in the in simulation. So now I'm going to explain how we found like uh, the mechanical property. So we use very uh, like a you know, innovative method uh, called nano indentation. So nano indentation is like a nano scale, like a in, indent indentation. So you can see this is the a tip. Uh, you can indent the machine, uh, tap the. Uh, you can uh, indent uh, the cement or the paste uh, using this nano scale diamond uh, tip, which is like 750 nanometers. So from that we can get like a, what is the load and what is the depth that uh, uh, relationship and also we can uh, use uh, same tip to scratch the surface so uh, and we can find what is the properties in that the surface usually th that technique has been used for coatings uh, to to find the wearing of coating the durability of coating uh, nano indentation also used in uh, many mechanical and uh, uh, like electronic uh, uh, industries and also aerospace aerospace industry uh, to find the uh, the properties uh, of in nano scale and micro scale. So uh, in, in in our case, actually, we use this technique to to find the properties of uh, the concrete. So uh, the, using the nano nano indentation. So when we indent, this is what we are getting actually a load like kind of load versus deformation. But actually, it doesn't have any relationship to the properties. Like a, it, it doesn't have a direct relationship to the properties of the uh, let's say cement or the uh, the material that we are indenting. Uh, it's just a uh, load and uh, displacement. Then uh, what we did actually we indent 
uh, our the samples using the nano indenter and we found the properties. So if this is the properties that we get, as I mentioned, it doesn't have direct relationship to the strength or the elastic modulus directly. Uh, this is the graph that we are getting. So basically it's load and displacement. So if you see the, the purple line is the calcium hydroxide, you can see how it's strong and uh, the stiffness. Then it's the, uh, this is the, uh, the gel, uh, CSH gel, uh, high density uh, CSH, uh, then the low density CHS and the, the por porous phase. You can see how the, the strengths are changing. And also the right hand side, there are two typical graphs for the basalt and uh, sand. You can see the, the, the difference in the strength of CSH and, and the basalt. You can clearly see how much uh, the, the, the CSA gel, how much CSA gel is weak here. Then, uh, uh, then we found the pro properties, for example, we found the porous phase is like uh, elastic modulus is nine, uh, low density in the phase of the, uh, the silica, sil calcium silicate hydrate is 21 megapascal, high density uh, phase of the calcium silicate hydrate is uh, 40 megapascal, but other unreacted uh, clinker, cement, uh, slag, uh, calcium hydrox phase has a 67 megapascal. So you can see the difference of the elastic modulus in, in the same concrete. This is really fa fascinating because uh, the actual elastic modulus of the concrete was like a 54, but you can see like a, uh, most of them like uh, having the elastic modulus less than that. But the, uh, the clinker, this is average value actually, but the clinker and slag, uh, they, they have a higher elastic modulus and they are really contributing to the elastic modulus of the, the concrete as well as the strength of the concrete as well, because the clinker is really strong. It has a specific gravity of 3.1, uh, a specific gravity of like a sand, for example, 2.6, a specific gravity of the concrete somewhere around 2.4, 2.5. But the slag, they have a specific gravity of 3.9 to 3, uh, somewhere around 3. So they are very strong and they, they, they have a higher elastic modulus. So this clearly show which is actually participating a lot to the concrete strength and actually who reduced the strength and who reduced the elastic modulus of the, uh, the high strength concrete. Actually, the weak part actually is the cement, reacted cement uh, is the weakest point and the, the pores, that, that's caused the problem in concrete, not the cement. The unreacted cement is really good. Uh, it increased the strength and also decreased the elastic modulus. Calcium hydroxide also same. It's very strong. Slag, unreacted slag also same. So in high strength concrete, actually what is happening because of the lower uh, the water to bind ratio, most of uh, the cementitious particle, they don't react. Only, only some of them react and create the bond, like the glue, glue it's, it's the glue for the, the, the particles. So most of the unreacted particle, actually they have the highest strength. So actually they, they, they contribute, that's the one reason the high strength is, high, high, is strong. It's not only because of the uh, lower, to, lower to bind ratio uh, and lo, uh, lower porosity, but also uh, because of the unreacted, uh, the component uh, like clinker, slag in the, the mix, because they are really strong. Like if you indent it, you will see the, the difference in the result. They are really strong. So that's the one secret in a very high strength concrete. So then, uh, uh, then I, I'm, I'm actually, this, I, I will explain this in, in summary, like uh, what, what, what we have done in, uh, uh, in, in here. Like, uh, so uh, we do the nano indentation, like a grid. Uh, we do thousand by thousand grid to get a, like a better understanding of the sample. Then uh, we, 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 we get the result. Uh, uh, basically we, we, we get the, uh, the, the, the hardness of the, the indentation and we, we plot it. And from that, we, from a statistical analysis, actually we divide that result into different phases. So like, as I mentioned before, there's a porous phase, uh, which has a, like a lot of voids and a CSH uh, phase, uh, which is the calcium silicon hydrate, uh, then the unreacted particle. So we use like a, a like a mathematical statistical method to divide uh, this nano indentation result into different phases. 
So even though I use uh, simply like a, a simple like an arrow to connect this result into the uh, uh, the finite element or the representative volume element, actually this is the novelty. Like actually uh, we develop a new uh, like a method, new algorithm to find what is the properties like the the properties uh, or the input for this finite element modeling from the nano indentation as i mentioned that there's nano indentation it doesn't give any property but we develop like a new theories uh, to find what is the the properties uh, the, 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 the cohesive or the frictional friction uh, the properties uh, of these phases so that it can be modeled using the representative volume element. Actually, even though it is represented using one arrow, actually it's a uh, two, probably two years of work <laughs> of our uh, group. So I think that's enable uh, in researchers or the in the world to model concrete uh, from micro scale and connect that to the structural level. So I, that's 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 the new uh, the the novelty and the new invention like our team did that will enable like the uh, modeling of concrete in, uh, uh, in 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 detail and in a in a better way. So uh, so this is like a exercise that we did like uh, we model uh, th like in a level one means the micro scale and we upscale that to the concrete level. Uh, this is example for like elastic modulus like how we did that. So we did the nano indentation in this scale. Then we use that result and we upscale. What is the result in the structural scale? So from micro scale, like a nano scale uh, test, and now we can predict in what is happening in the um, uh, macro scale. So what we need is like a small piece of like a concrete sample. Th that's enough <laughs> uh, to do this. So because we are doing a nano scale uh, investigation. So even like a, let's say five millimeter, we buy five millimeter like a chip or a sample. If you can bring us like a, a chip, let's say if you want to test the concrete strength uh, of a, like an old building, for example, or like a bridge, like you want to see the like health of the structure, or you are not sure what is the strength is that after placing, you can bring us like a, a five millimeter by five millimeter small chip. You can break it and bring us we can tell like a, like a, like a reading the horoscope of a person we can tell what is this concrete what's happening there what will be the uh, the strength uh, the elastic modulus stress strain uh, what's wrong in there what is breaking first what's the damage uh, how it propagate we can tell many things so uh, th th this is a ground breaking actually uh, achievement i think not only for us but also the uh, all the researchers uh, and uh, also this can be used to modify uh, this concrete. So if you want to add something new in this micro scale, we can add it and we can simulate it. No need of even uh, experiment. So what we have done, we have linked everything with the, uh, 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 like a uh, high, like react, like the uh, react, like a similar hydraulic react, reaction. Uh, concrete reaction uh, framework so that it, it know what is the product so that then we can uh, predict what is the strength and properties. So then uh, the final scale, I think I have uh, a couple of minutes. I will go through, the, uh, through this very quickly because this is the most innovative part of uh, what we are doing. So everything is actually made of the nano structure. Even CSH, uh, of a, the human body and everything is uh, made of nano level like the molecules actually it governs the 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 the, the meso behavior but our understanding and ability to change those structures is quite less especially for concrete we we do the nano scale modification in uh, for the polymers uh, to alloys uh, to many other material but but our understanding and our ability or our intention to change things in nano scale is quite low for concrete. But to be honest, real potential of concrete is actually lying on in that scale. Because if you change a small thing there, we can, uh, we can uh, get uh, a big change in the big scale. Uh, a simple example I can give is the, the iron. The iron was really brittle and people didn't use it. But adding a, a pinch of a carbon changes properties and even change the, the way of the human civilization to be honest. So we did that in the nano scale. It's like a, 
And also we, we know that Sri Lanka is really good in uh, making steel, let's say a couple of thousand years ago. Uh, it's a well-proven fact. We know the Dam Damascus sword is the best example for that. Uh, that steel, uh, uh, the, that's a very popular. So the small change in this level can create a huge difference in the uh, meso scale. So the nano scale, how to model actually, uh, it's, 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 it, there's only way, uh, it's a quantum physics and the molecular dynamic simulation is the only way to simulate that. And uh, molecular dynamics is the uh, method we, we, are, we are using to simulate the molecules, but we get the inputs from quantum mechanics because there's no test to, to get the mechanical properties beyond the nano indentation, uh, uh, below the nano, like beyond the nano indentation equipment. So nano indentation equipment is the, 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 the equipment in the world uh, which can, uh, which can uh, characterize mechanical properties in a uh, small scale. After that, there's no equipment to characterize the mechanical properties. So if he's going to simulate something, the input has to come from theoretical background. There's no testing method. So that's why we had to use quantum mechanics uh, to uh, calculate input for the molecular dynamics. So molecular dynamic is the, uh, the method we simulate interaction between the, the molecules and the atoms. Uh, right. So the, the scale that we are talking about is like a, it's a one nanometer to 10 nanometer scale that we are talking about. Yeah. So, right. Then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, so the, the nano indentation is, is the tip is 750 nanometers. So the, I, I hope you can see the pointer. So the, the nano indenter tip is lying somewhere around here. So we can, we can measure whatever in right hand side, but we can measure or the characterize the mechanical properties uh, in the left hand side, because the smallest uh, size, the size of the nano indent is 750 nanometer. Uh, nanometer. So, but the thing is like we, we, we are adding uh, materials nanomaterials into the concrete, which is smaller than 750 nanomaterial. So for this region, actually we have to use uh, the molecular dynamic simulation to understand that. We know the nanomaterials are being added to the concrete and it's getting popular. People uh, talk a lot about nanomaterial, including graphene oxide, the nano carbon tubes, nano silica, nano aluminum oxide. We know they improve the LEG strength, durability, creep. It improves the bonds even between the aggregate and binder. So, uh, to improve the ITZ, uh, nano aluminum oxide, it is found that uh, it increases the elasticity. Then um, there's ma many other things like uh, polymer intercalated exfoliate, improves shrinkage. So there are a lot of nanomaterial, but the thing is how to understand that. So if you want to uh, like, a, like, a, like a find the result, we have to add it and do the experiments and crush the concrete cubes or the cylinders to get the behavior but we don't know what's happening in that scale. So the molecular dynamic is the, the, uh, the, the, the equipment or the tool to see what is happening inside. So especially today, I'm going to discuss about like the graphene or the carbon, sorry, carbon-based nanomaterials and uh, what the work that we are doing. So the carbon, there are, uh, there are several carbon-based nanomaterials. We know the diamond is very expensive but say made of same, uh, the thing that made of uh, made graphite, uh, uh, the, we know Sri Lanka is, uh, uh, is very popular for the graphite, even they call it Ceylon graphite because it's 98 to 9% clean. Uh, Sri Lanka is the only country uh, ha uh, has uh, that, with, uh, that purity. Uh, uh, so there's a big potential that we can value, we can add, add value to graphite and probably uh, make uh, graphene and carbon nanotube in Sri Lanka. I know the, the, there are some pilot plants in LOLC and uh, uh, Nano Institute uh, is working on making uh, uh, the carbon tubes and graphene oxide. So I think there will be a big potential for Sri Lanka uh, because uh, the gra graphite is like one ton is like 1,000 to 2,000, but if you valid, value added and if we produce graphene, uh, one ton can be 200 to three, uh, 300,000 uh, dollars. So that's a lot. So 
So this carbon graphene is coming in a big way. So we we want to even try uh, and see what is happening in uh, the CSH or the nano scale uh, when we add the uh, graphene oxide and uh, carbon nanotubes. So I just want to mention the scale that we are talking about. We are talking about like 0.5 to 1.5 nanometer di uh, diameter uh, carbon nanotubes. And also uh, there are single uh, wall carbon nanotube and also there are multi wall carbon nanotubes. So the multi wall carbon nanotubes can even extend, the diameters can extend to the 100 nanometers or more. So then uh, the other, other uh, uh, important, uh, the graphene based material is the graphene oxide. So you, we know the graphene is a, the flat sheet uh, of uh, carbon chains. Uh, then we can add a different uh, functional group. This can be hydroxide, this can be uh, carboxylic. So we can add different uh, uh, component or different uh, uh, functional group uh, to graphene so that it will bond properly with the different material. So the problem with graphene, we know graphene is a carbon organic material, but uh, cement uh, and concrete, they are inorganic materials, they are, uh, consist of silicon dioxide and calcium oxide. Uh, but carbon is not really, really go well with the uh, non-organic uh, material. So there should be interface uh, unless uh, what will happen, even though we add it, there won't be a, a proper bond between uh, concrete and uh, uh, carbon because they are, they are dissimilar material. That's why we have to add some functional groups, which we call graphene oxide. Sometimes adding too much functional groups can cause a problem. So we reduce that functional group later on, then we call a reduced graphene oxide. Uh, then, uh, so MD simulation, uh, this is a brief introduction about MD simulation. So it is basically a molecular or the nano level simulation to find properties or, or mechanical properties of uh, uh, the materials then, and what is the uh, molecular structures. For example, we can let cement and graphene to interact uh, and see what is the new structure, how they form uh, actually in the, in the real nature and uh, what, what, are, what is the, the energy potential, like energy potential mean the actually uh, the bonds or uh, in between the atoms and uh, what is the behavior of uh, these atoms when we apply the load. So uh, this molecular dynamics actually can be uh, used very effectively to uh, reduce the number of experiments that we need and also to develop a new type of materials uh, and also understand what is happening in the molecular nano level. So uh, uh, especially the, the, this, the, the, we are using molecular dynamics to develop a new uh, type of graphene oxide to blend with concrete. The, 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 the currently available type of graphene oxide, actually it's not the best for concrete. So what we are doing, actually this is Kanishka's work. So Kanishka, brilliant student actually, he, he, uh, he I, I, would, I would say he's an expert in, in this area now. Uh, I, our group is actually expert uh, to be honest, like uh, in this area now with the, the vast knowledge uh, simulating like the graphene oxide uh, and also coming up with new functional groups uh, for the graphene oxide, considering the concrete. So people have done research for graphene oxide, but in different, uh, for, with the other different material. But our group, what we are doing actually, we, 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 we are modifying the graphene oxide. So that's why we are, we call our, our research is uh, focusing on uh, nano modified uh, cementitious composites. Actually we are developing uh, nano, modify cementitious composites uh, with graphene oxide, which blend with the concrete. So, so that the concrete will be flexible uh, in the future. Uh, they will be more durable. They will be more fire resistant. So that's what we are doing. So when we chain the functional group, uh, matching the concrete properties, so it will act as a polymer because the uh, carbon, the graphene can be considered as some sort of a polymer. So th that's a beauty. Like uh, if you add a, uh, like a, a polymer uh, that can uh, blend with uh, carbon and the silicon, then we will get some elastic properties, like uh, like a plastics, uh, like plastic the pr properties when we add the right uh, functional group uh, for the polymer there. So, for example, like a, like a, for example, the calcium and silicon polymers, like they, we have calcium and silicon polymers, we call silate. So when we add a, a functional group like that, right functional group, it can bond with the uh, graphene well, graphene oxide well. In the same time, it can bond with the calcium hydro calcium uh, hydroxide in in in, in the uh, the concrete. So that will create a, like a, a, a 
non-organic organic like a, a transition zone so that the concrete will be flexible one day even we can use the uh, like a tensile properties of concrete uh, for our structural design so that we can reduce the reinforcement that we need so the 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 the, the innovation that we can do with graphene oxide and molecular uh, level modification is quite significant so this is the uh, the the molecular uh, dynamic like the model uh, kanishka actually uh, develop actually he used many uh, new techniques uh, to to develop these models uh, not only reactive phase non reactive phase and also grand conical uh, monte, Car monte carlo methods uh, so he used different techniques actually this is not easy uh, so this is how it looked like in the molecular uh, le level simulation so this is the uh, the calcium uh, silicon uh, the hydrate uh, this is also not well proven like uh, no one knows well what is the structure of uh, calcium silicon hydrate it's also not estab established so we are doing even uh, like a new new research like a new new uh, simulation to find like what is the right uh, uh, the modeling techniques and what is the right structure so we embedded the carbon tubes uh, then uh, we found like uh, the properties like in different directions uh, with different orientations so then we can find like uh, what is the behavior actually what is the interaction between carbon tube and uh, the csa gel so what we found actually the carbon uh, tube actually even if though it's strong, strong but it doesn't grip really well with the csa that's a weakness because it doesn't uh, bond properly. For example, like imagine a reinforcement. So when we uh, like design like a reinforced concrete, actually we, we have a, like a, a anchorage zone, anchorage length. So that's why we, we, we do the bar bending to provide the, uh, the, the appropriate the anchorage. Uh, then only we get the uh, full tensile strength of the, the reinforcement, same concept here. Uh, we have very strong uh, like reinforcement, which is the carbon nanotube, but it actually doesn't grip properly. So we, we don't get the, the maximum or the, the best that we can get from the carbon nanotube. So these are the, these, we saw these observation through the, this nano scale or the molecular dynamic uh, simulation. We can't see this in normal lab, laboratory tests. Without knowing, we can't fix the problem. Now, what we are doing at the moment, even how to improve the grip uh, so how we can modify this nano structure, uh, even what is the best uh, functional group that we can introduce for nano tubes to have this grip so that we can get the, the maximum uh, from this, the uh, adding nano tubes. So we, then uh, there's a significant, like a very interesting result here. If you see the stress or the strength here, can you see it's a, we are talking about gigapascal. So when we do the simulation in micro nano scale in the molecular level, actually the strength of CSH and this carbon nanotubes, actually the strength is around 30 megapascal in some direction. Sorry, 30 gigapascal. 30 gigapascal means it's like a, a thousand times, a thousand times uh, stronger than the normal strength concrete. So this is the actual strength in this level. What is happening when we are like uh, coming, coming, for coming from bottom to top, let's say from nano to mesoscale, due to the defects and due to the porosity, they are the two main reasons, the strength reduced by 10,000 uh, times. So the, the, this is the thing, like if we can find how to, imp, like how to avoid that, how to avoid the, or further avoid the, uh, the nanoscale voids, for example, or the imp impurity or the defects, we can actually harness, we can get the real, the potential of the concrete. For example, like the beginning, I mentioned the concrete can go up to eight, 800 megapascal using this special tr treatment method. So uh, that special treatment means actually it, it, it get rid of these defects. It improve, improve the, the bonding between <clears throat> different CSH, uh, uh, the grains. So uh, ha, like ha, achieving 800 megapascal shows, actually we can, uh, we can unveil, un unveil, or we can, we can get this, uh, uh, the, the properties in nano scale to the, uh, the meso scale. So these are the, uh, the, the, the things that we can do. 
So that's why even I said like uh, exploring and uh, unlocking the potential of uh, the nanoscale is the, the miracle or the next big step in uh, the concrete industry. So then uh, I'm, 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 uh, so th then I can show you like uh, some simulation. So this simulation, so what is happening in the, uh, the molecular level, actually which bond breaks and what happened to the carbon nanotubes, uh, whether it slips, whether it breaks. So accordingly, we can modify our, uh, the materials. So then uh, uh, the multi-wall uh, tubes, we also simulated multi-wall tubes. Then we, we can find what is the most effective, uh, the number of multi-walls, even the diameter suits for uh, the, the, our, the concrete or the, the uh, calcium silicon hybrid. So uh, Sadeep, uh, sorry, Kanishka uh, did a very good analysis. Actually, now we will publish this work very soon. Uh, and also, this is like, a, uh, this is how we understand the behavior. So what is uh, caused the initial cracking or the yielding, uh, then uh, uh, for the crack progress and then sudden drop is due to the, 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 the failure of the carbon nanotube. So, so we can see, like uh, we can observe and we can uh, explain like what is the mechanism happening here uh, dependent on the, the type of the carbon nanotube, the direction of the CSH, uh, the chains. Uh, so we can explore those things using the molecular dynamics. Then the other things, uh, the other important material is the more, I think I would say the most important material, the graphene oxide. So we are doing the, the simulation actually again, the, the, like the, we are the, the first team to, to, to simulate graphene oxide in this level uh, in the world. People have done things, but not in the right way, not uh, particularly considering the, uh, the concrete, uh, the, the context of concrete. And so we are doing these things uh, right. So now we are trying different like the uh, functional groups and we are trying what is the best for the concrete. And also we are trying to come up with like a, a better functional group, something uh, change uh, the properties in um, meso scale significantly. We believe like if we, if we find the right, uh, the combination for the carbon uh, and uh, the calcium silicon hydrate, we, we, we should be able to increase the, 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 the tensile properties, elasticity properties of concrete significantly. Uh, uh, especially using uh, like a polymer uh, based on carbon and si uh, silicon so that it will bond properly with the carbon and uh, calcium hydroxide in the CSH. So this is, these are some, uh, uh, some, some uh, like a models that we created graphene. This is the graphene with defects. So these, the, the, there are a lot of defects in the material. They are not perfect like this. This is something we have to uh, count in the simulation. Then the graphene oxide with high, uh, high hydrox hydroxide. So you can, I, I don't know whether you can see the tiny red spot. So th they are the hydroxide. So this is the top view, but if you see from the side, you will, you will be able to see the, uh, uh, the functional group. So th these are some simulation for graphene and uh, with, and, uh, with uh, graphene with defects. Uh, so we can see, we, we observe the difference and this is uh, like a graphene oxide uh, simulation. So for the testing, Still, like uh, we are developing, that's why we, we are not presenting the result. Uh, uh, we, we, like uh, we actually we are working with uh, American uh, uh, research team. Uh, Kanishka can actually give more information that uh, uh, to develop uh, like a, what is the carbon to calcium bonding. So we have to start from the quantum level, and we have we are working with the the team in America. Uh, to develop because without that the, the proper bonding uh, we can't simulate that that's why we are not presenting the result actually we are also do, do, like fine tuning the models like uh, then uh, uh, then as then uh, this is about like a high performance concrete like uh, when we say high performance concrete you may think the concrete is for structures only actually the the, the, the in the future the this concrete even will be used for uh, store storing the hydrogen for example so as I mentioned, this climate change decarbonization is coming in a big way. It has already affected the energy sector. You may know that in Sri Lanka, we are not allowed to build another uh, coal power plant, uh, more than 200 meg megawatts. It's because of our emissions. We have already pledged to the uh, 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 UN, uh, our climate, uh, like the emission goals. So according to that, our options are like the wind and solar and natural gas. That's why the government is planning for the 
the li liquid natural gas plant because its emission is half the coal power plants. And also they are targeting for 500 megawatts, uh, the wind power plants. That's why you see a lot of winds uh, is going in Manna and Kalpitiya, the best zone for, uh, to harness, uh, like to get the wind. So even in Sri Lanka, even though we are not a big, like a emitter or the big emitting country in the world, like we, we squeezed by the, the Paris Agreement. So, so whatever the wind power plants and the solar, what you're seeing around is not because of actually we want to do, but it's because of the pressure that we are getting from the uh, Paris Agreement. So in the, and also I know that currently like the CB is planning for like a pump hydro system. Uh, one of my friend is like involved in there. So pump hydro is happening. Pump hydro means like you pump the, the, uh, the water again back to the reservoirs when you, in the, 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 in the, uh, the day times because our current use is less in daytime, we have excess. So we pump into the reservoirs uh, in the, uh, so that in the nighttime, we will use that to generate the uh, additional electricity that we need. So, but the thing is, the batteries or even the pump hydros like has a limitation. The battery cannot be used to store the energy. So hydrogen will be like a critical thing in the future. So we have started doing research in our research group, how to create or how to develop a, a very good concrete, a high performance concrete for hydrogen storages, for example. So we have to know what is the interaction between hydrogen and concrete. Uh, because the steel steel is not very good for hyd store hydrogen because hydrogen react with the steel and create the brittleness uh, and it, it, it snapped the steel. So the concrete is the best option in the future for that kind of application. The reason behind that is super cheap and also it's made of highly abandoned uh, to material in the world, which is calcium and silicon. That's why the concrete is so popular because it, it's resourced from the highly abandoned material in the world, silicon and calcium. So this is like a, uh, actually Kanishka's good work. Uh, he did like a very uh, innovative method called a grand conjugal Monte Carlo simulation to see the interaction between hydrogen and what is the bonding between hydrogen and uh, concrete. So uh, this is like a kind of a, like a, a simulation, the hydrogen particle, how it interact with the calcium silicon. Uh, the hydrate. So with that, I would like to conclude my presentation. I think I have taken around like a one hour and 15 minutes. Uh, so uh, basically my, the, the concept we, I want to give, like uh, we want to give the concrete has a highly heterogeneous, uh, like a complex structure with multiple scale. So if we want to like uh, uh, develop like a high performance concrete, first we want to know what's happening inside rather looking at it from outside. Uh, that's how we we do the engineering. So as a like a, in engineering, like we we have to know what's happening inside. So then we divide we can divide it concrete into three scale, meso, micro, and nano scale, uh, based on uh, the macro and micro structure of the concrete and what are the available like the techniques to simulate that and what are the methods to characterize its properties. Because when when we want to simulate, like we we should know what is inside and what is the methods available and how to get inputs for these, uh, the, how to get the uh, properties as input. So then uh, uh, to develop high performance concrete in the future, like a, like a high, like in a nano scale for the hydrogen application. So we have to have a good guidance, understanding about these scales and we have to make changes in these scales, like in a nano to my, my, my micro scale, because the changes that we can do in meso scale is very limited. Uh, then uh, trial and error method uh, in using large scale experiment is no, not an option anymore. Uh, then uh, this multi-scale method can be used to develop high performance concrete by modifying uh, material at macro and nano scale. Uh, and also we can use this uh, like multi-scale and uh, uh, upscaling method even to develop uh, nano modified cementitious material in the future. So with that, uh, I would like to conclude. Uh, th then thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shanaka Baduge. I think uh, it is no doubt, there is no doubt that it was one of the very interesting sessions we had. And um, uh, I uh, thank, uh, before we thank uh, Dr. Shanaka Baduge, May I invite our general manager, industrial sales and in concrete engineer Nandana Amunutudua to conduct the discussion uh, forward. Nandana.
thank you sir uh, thank you very much uh, dr shalankar uh, for uh, exposing us to the latest uh, technology in uh, research and uh, technology so uh, first of all uh, before we go to the when uh, session i would like to uh, open up uh, uh, some uh, opportunity to professor nanakar Yeah. Yeah. Can I can I also uh, add something and 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 Mr. Nandra? So I'm I'm really sure. happy and uh, I'm really honored to be. I can see Professor Nanakar again. I have to mention uh, he's the person actually. I would say I learned complete in uh, when I was in uh, <laughs> university. So uh, I'm privileged to be honest, and I'm uh, all, like uh, I'm really grateful to have uh, like uh, you know that kind of like uh, uh, of teachers. Uh, for us like that we have started our career and uh, uh, this uh, journey so professor nanaykar i'm really happy to see you and it's a great honor for me uh, to see you here i'm sure professor nanaykar is like of one of his friends in this subject uh, so yeah. uh, can you please add something uh, on behalf of the yes, uh, yes. Uh, i hope uh, all of you can hear me huh? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, Love can hear you. Okay, okay. Right, right. I mean, it is a really happy day for me. I mean, uh, one is I mean, Kasun did an excellent presentation. I mean, start uh, very clear presentation, starting from very basic to very complicated stuff. You know, quantum mechanics, the molecular dynamics. Uh, oh, uh, congratulations, uh, entire team and Kasun for a very good presentation. Also. Be the team leader who uh, giving the leadership. Uh, the Priya Priya Mendes, my batchmate. I think I must congratulate him to do this kind of you know groundbreaking research. I think it's. Uh, I'm very very proud of you all. Uh, and Thank also I'm happy that some of my former students are in the team. Right. So, There are a lot of questions, Kasun. That I mean, I don't want to take too much of time. I think. Yeah, but I must say that Professor 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 Tanakar, can I interrupt? We are going to see here, and uh, no, my I'm very proud. My batchmate. We were doing concrete together, so uh, honored to see uh, Professor Tanakar here, uh, which I acknowledge with Professor Tishan as well. But I think the uh, with Professor Tanakar, my good friend, more than anything else. batchmate and a good friend so let's acknowledge what he has done to the concrete industry in sri lanka we are very very proud and also i had to i will not talk too much uh, uh, dr chanaka brilliant presentation beautiful presentation even i am learning <laughs> although <laughs> i am learning as well today a uh, lot of stuff and uh, sadeep actually had to say and kanishka was trained by uh, in fact professor anya kar so they they already had the training before they join our group So, uh, and even uh, Dr. Shanagar. So, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, yeah. Professor Nanakar. Uh, Professor Nanakar, actually, uh, Sadeep is the master student. If I'm correct, uh, I think. So, I think you can see the influence. Uh, yeah, Nanakar. I met uh, Sadeep uh, through uh, Professor Nanakar at that time. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, yes. I'm, 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 I'm re really happy about uh, all of you all. Right. I'm mean, doing very well. I mean, uh, now, I mean, you are. Doing, I mean. on breaking research i mean the state of the art research keep keep going keep going and i think you can you can come up with a lot of good innovation so i have a lot of questions kasun but i don't want to spend too much of time uh, because the already past uh, 8:45 uh, so the nandana i mean uh, do we have any time for the discussion or hmm? Yes, sure. Nandana, we, we can. We can reply. Discussion? We can reply to some of the questions. Yes, sir. We yeah, we can have uh, time. Yeah, the few questions is that I mean now uh, one is that I mean I am not going to the micro and the uh, no level, but meso level that I mean you consider the you found that. The strength of the aggregate is the uh, most important one, right? Strength of the aggregate, but when you try to simulate, I uh, mean, the, uh, the strength of the concrete, you use uh, density of aggregate, 
without using the strength of the concrete. Now, usually we, sorry, strength of the aggregate. Usually we uh, measure the strength of the aggregate uh, by unconfined compressive strength or then confined strength or impact strength. So that the two, two commonly used, uh, you know, uh, parameters are the value and the 10 percent finals. So why do you went for the density of the aggregate rather than the strength of the aggregate? I think, uh, Professor, that good, is my question. Good, question. Question. good question, Professor. Actually, uh, when we develop it, uh, it actually first I include the uh, strength of the aggregate. Then, uh, then uh, what what I thought like uh, if you, if you're going to do that, then we have to uh, do the testing like the uniaxial compression testing. Then we have to uh, get the core sample. Of course, we can do the bed, bed density and dry density as well. Then I thought like uh, that would be a, like a bit of complex, like uh, finding the compressive. For example, even some aggregate that we have. Uh, they haven't done the compressive strength, for example. So the data was limited. Even in the research, uh, then I were, when we are going to develop the equation, we couldn't find a lot of uh, literatures uh, with the uh, compressive strength for the aggregates. But when we analyzing with the limited da data we had, we found there's a correlation between the density and the strength. So then we thought uh, for the convenience, we will use the density of the aggregate because anyone can measure the density of the aggregate easily. Even like, a, for example, like a, like a, uh, if somebody give a, like a sample from a quarry, like then if you want to get the strength, like uh, probably we may have to, we may need like a, of course you can use the impact test as well. Uh, we can get a core like a, to test the strength, but instead of that, uh, we can measure the density and we can predict what is what will be the strength of that. So the whole idea is like it's good if you have like a strength, but uh, the problem was like a, get, like a getting a strength is maybe quite difficult in some cases. Then we couldn't find a lot of literatures with the strength because they have done the the uh, the, the experiment, but without telling the strength of the uh, aggregates. So then, the, because of that, uh, we developed the equation for the density of the aggregate. Uh, because uh, there's a correlation between the strength and the density of the aggregate as well. The strength of uh, aggregate is, is uh, that's a, uh, the relationship between uh, the, uh, the strength of aggregate and the strength of the, uh, sorry, strength of the aggregate and the density of the aggregate. Uh. Okay, Shanaka. Yeah, understood. Understood. That, I mean, I'm not going to ask so, so many, but I mean, two, two, two more things. One is the... <laughs> I mean, we, 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 I mean, talk about the curing. Curing is very important for the high pressure to complete, right? But in high strength concrete, our water cement ratio in the range of 0.2 in the 0.3, I think you have shown yeah, us two, 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 yeah, uh, two, two slides uh, analyzing the concrete with water cement ratio 0.2, 2, and 0.3. Oh, so, uh, no, yeah, so for theoretically, I mean, the minimum water cement ratio for the complete hydration that I mean, based on this, uh, the old theory, uh, uh, the, it is about 0 0.42, 0 0.42, anything less than that one, you get unhydrated uh, cement, right? Yeah. But in high strength concrete, either trend is, you now it is very low, uh, you use the internal curing because the external curing will not, you know, penetrate into the concrete because that will affect only the very cover part, maybe mm. 20 millimeters or 30 millimeters. But in high strength concrete, you want to make sure that the hydration, not as you, as you mentioned correctly, that I mean, even you get unhydrated cement that can contribute to the strength. Because that is much stronger than uh, the, the calcium silicate hydrate. Exactly. That I mean, that is a new thing that I think you have, you know, exposed. I mean, uh, so due, I mean, based on the micro indentation. So now, is there any advantage in that case of going for internal curing, right? Yeah. It is in high strength concrete. That is the trend, right? Yeah. Because the the minimum required water cement ratio is not there for the complete type. Exactly. So, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, and the, the, the other, the, that is the, I, I will ask the other question also and stop it there. <laughs> and the modeling of the 
interfacial transition zone, right? Mm -hmm. Now, that is the in normal concrete and in even high strength concrete, that is the weakest link between the aggregate and the hydrated cement True. base, right? True. True. Now, you said that, I mean, to improve the strength, definitely that you have to strengthen the this interfacial transition zone, right? Exactly. So now, now, now in your model, right? When you go to the uh, nanoscale, right? Now you have to model this interfacial transition zone, right? The link, the bond between the aggregate and the, the, the hydrated cement base. True. So True. if you can just illustrate, I mean, how you all did it. Yeah. And the curing one, right? Will that pen? Yeah. I will stop it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Shall I answer? I think very good. Uh, I think very interesting question, professor. Uh, I think uh, I, I think uh, I think two challenges actually. What you said these are two uh, two challenges that we also face. So first, like, uh, can I show you like a, a very quick, uh, quick, uh, uh, very quickly a slide? Uh, I have, first of all, I have cancer. Give me a second. Right. This one. Right. So, can you see my uh, is, is the screen? Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, but yes, not yes, in yes, uh, full screen mode. So, yeah, professor, like actually. Full screen, full screen mode. Yeah, it's all right, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can see. So, can you see this? Uh, uh, I actually, can see. I, I actually, before even the nano indentation, professor, like actually, I, I, I we reveal, like a, uh, reveal the secret what's happening in high strength concrete looking at the density. Yes, so this is the specific true density. We call it true density. This is not the bulk density. So can you look at these numbers? Uh, the cement is the densest, 3.110, because we know it's silicon dioxide with calcium oxide. Uh, but mostly... Uh, yeah, uh, silicon dioxide with calcium oxide. Fly ash, we can see it's 2.2, actually less denser. Slag, high 2.8, like 2,860. Silica fume is even like a less denser than the fly ash. Nano silica is lower than that. So the aggregate, if you look at here, the basalt is like two, 2,940. It's like almost uh, similar to uh, the basalt, uh, sorry, but to the slag almost. This shows how much the aggregate are denser. The basalt is actually formed in, a, in volcanic, like a lava, but it's cooled down very slowly. So the, the grains are like a form, uh, like a uniformly. So it has a lesser porosity and the grains are like a form really good. It's very dense. But sand, if you look at here, it's 2,610, very similar to uh, uh, like, uh, somewhere around like a granite, isn't it? Yeah, the granite, isn't it? So this shows actually the real strength of the material inside this mix. But the thing is, they are like the bonded, glued using the uh, glue, uh, to, to the CSH, which is the weakest actually. It's very porous because of the water, uh, uh, very porous. Uh, and also we know it's not a well-formed structure. Like uh, for example, fly ash, yes, uh, slag, cement, they are like a, like a forged hole, let's say the best way is formed in a very high temperature, like uh, they are like a crystalline or like a, uh, they, they, they are, the molecular structure is like a formed well. But CSH, actually we are, we are forming it in a room temperature. We also know that it's like a more like a precipitation. So the, the, the molecular structure is for not, not formed well. So that's a weak, weak point. So the, the, the whole idea is like, if you have these particles like the cement, fly ash, like silica fume and not reacted, actually they will, they will contribute a lot to the, the final result. So what, this is what happening in a very high strength concrete. The, when we look at the, uh, the, the mix or the, the pace using the SCM, we observe that there's a lot of unreacted clinker, a lot of slag. Uh, there's a, a, a less a CSH phase, actually. So, so as you mentioned, I think uh, uh, it's uh, the, the, when the water cement ratio is like, a, you mentioned 0. 0.442, isn't it? 
So yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, I think right. somewhere around there, no point. Uh, so yes. Then if it's less than, then we don't have enough water. Water so for the complete hydration. Yes. Okay, yes. Then, then there, there are two advantages of that. One is when this water is less, less force because the water actually doesn't have strength. If you indent uh, like a like a let's say water, it's a zero strength. So when less water means less force. Uh, with the what is like a if you consider water as a material it has zero strength so uh, so we have less zero strength material we have less force and we have higher uh, let's say fly ash like unreacted particle so it will add strength as well so uh, normal strength concrete what is happening actually because too much water more pores and also we are creating more low density and porous uh, CSH, CSH. That's what's happening with in height like a very high strength concrete because less water means like a CSH is like a denser. So high density CSH is, is more there. So uh, th that's the secret. Yeah. So professor, like uh, for even normal strength concrete, uh, uh, exactly like if we can uh, like a, like a less water and use the water reduce like the whole idea of adding water is like getting the workability so isn't it so if you can reduce the water and increase like if you can adjust the workability from admixtures i think that's the best option isn't it so i think that's the answer so the third one actually you asked the how to simulate the it set because it is like as i mentioned in micro my, 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 uh, in uh, uh, micro uh, level so getting properties is not possible using the normal uh, uh, methods. Uh, so what we did, we use a nano scratch. When we can't indent, because I mentioned the indent is 750 nanometers, we can indent, but it's scratching because it's like a coating, in, the coating in between. So we use a nano scratch. So Sadeep, I think Sadeep is here. He is the best person to tell what is the special method or the, how he get the properties, Sadeep, uh, to model the IT set, Sadeep. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, sir. Like uh, we did some uh, nano indentations as well uh, in the IT set zone, sir. Like it's like uh, in we found that in high, high strength concrete, the zone is very uh, thinner compared to the normal strength. Like it's I can in share normal the strength, slide yeah. also very quickly. I yeah, can it's share like, slide. It's like 35 micrometers. So from that one, so the main issue is like. Uh, we didn't have a method to like obtain the strength properties using a nano indentation because nano indentation mostly uh, we are getting the elastic modulus. So uh, we developed a, I mean, a framework to uh, obtain uh, strength parameters using uh, hardness because hardness is correlated to the compressive strength of a material. So then, uh, so it's similar. So in uh, in ITZ range, you can see like the lot of porosity is there. So the hardness yeah, values are comparatively, right? yeah, comparatively lower to the, uh, I mean, cement paste. So then from that one, we can get uh, approximate value for the strength and for the elastic modulus. Uh, and then from that one, uh, we can model uh, the IT set. So there are like several methods of modeling it. Uh, you can use, because the, the small thickness, so it's like 35 micrometers. So you can't use like solid uh, finite elements. So because uh, when you mesh it, you will have yeah, like, millions of elements. So one, one method is to like, I mean, uh, idealize the thickness and like using a bit more uh, thicker finite elements. Other, other thing is like, there's something called zero thickness cohesive elements. And uh, the other thing is cohesive contacts. So we can model using like, it's called traction separation behavior. And uh, from that, uh, we can like simulate because the actual properties uh, so normally what they are doing is like so they assume like 80 percent of the strength of uh, uh, the cement paste is like uh, previously they have done like that so yeah and the elastic modulus like 80 percent of the cement paste is the elastic modulus of it set so yeah i think we may be the first people who use the right properties is it in using the nano uh, indentation and nano square so can you see the uh, sadip you can even uh, I, I i highlighted the it set there uh, yeah so the, the, the yeah the, yeah the right side is uh, like uh, the uh, the water cement ratio with 0.3 and the left one is 0.22 so you can see like the porosity is uh, this uh, at 28 days porosity is much higher in the, the right region so all, i mean in the, all the all the specimens it was like that so like i mean there's a clear 
clear i mean uh, uh var- variation in that front so like uh, so th- that's the, that that's that's the main issue so uh, i think the porosity is the main issue uh, the darkness is the, the 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 black spots are the porosity. yeah black yeah yeah this is a scanning electron microscopy so the the, the black black parts is other poro- porous uh, faces yeah but you can't see the same uh, the, the, the the porosity in the left porosity in the other part even it is we can't see a clear it is there i see in the yeah, aspect, with the point yeah it's it's, it's point. yeah it's very thin yeah it's very thin yeah yeah uh, th- thank you sadeep i mean i mean nice to see you at the face i mean after yeah thank you month. yeah <laughs> great to see you sir. yeah <laughs> yeah i mean i mean we can i mean very interesting i mean you can keep on you know discussing that is i mean the yeah. question that i have asked you kasun that is water cement ratio now now we are worried about the water cement ratio especially with respect to durability right so i mean higher the water cement ratio i mean as you said that mean you are introducing more pores mm-hmm. capillary pores so the now and and the durability depends on the mainly the cover zone Yeah. so our zone porosity i mean you can reduce by even uh, i mean uh, 0.4 water cement ratio by you know curing right so you allow it to hydrate i mean uh, and uh, allow the hydration product to fill that you know capillary pores and make it less porous yeah so yeah. what what i'm saying is i mean uh, uh, if you can you know model this effect as well i mean I, i feel that that is the perfect right i mean the hydration process and the how the water cement ratio you know affect the porosity uh, hmm? so the and the, the distribution of the pores so if you if your water cement ratio uh, is low i mean the, then your number of pores i mean the porosity will be less and the connectivity and the other important thing is the connectivity of the pores now there's yeah. something called the segmentation of the pores with the degree of hydration so okay. that is the most important now now you can have the isolated pores if those are not interconnected then you are, i mean okay i mean your permeability is low mm-hmm. but if the pores are interconnected then the permeability is high so this disconnection right the segmentation of the capillary pores depends on the of course the, the 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 curing period and the water cement ratio and the degree of hydration now yeah. th- those are very you know all you know the the theories and i mean now in your the current research mm-hmm. i mean if you can concentrate on the durability now still uh, uh, i think you you are talking about the strength of the concrete i think the part of your this research is also the durability as of course mm, yeah true so that 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 is more related to the porosity than the strength no mm-hmm. it is more related to the porosity than the uh, yeah. strength so if you can simulate that all so then that is i mean you have done everything for the uh, you know uh, the simulate <laughs> the concrete right so i mean now you are doing i mean very very you know i mean the advanced stuff uh, the modeling at the quantum level right so the what i feel is even that you know meso level and micro level i mean if you can simulate the porosity and the mm. interconnectivity of the pores right mm. and then the relate that to the permeability then then that one can be related to the durability right yeah okay, even though i said that i had no, asked you question no, actually I mean, professor, I stop <laughs> the professor nanaykar i think that's a good suggestion to be as i mentioned like uh, we can simulate the durability of the, the chloride uh, penetration to the permeability uh, but actually that's the area we haven't thought about it actually uh, one like and also it's very important when it comes to structure health monitoring to like the durability this and also like a uh, uh durable you know like the durability is not something we can simulate very easily as well so but we can use this technique to yeah, do that yeah, yeah. probably yeah, we can a, do a, like a collaborated project professor uh, with uh, <laughs> the student there probably because that's not our expertise as well so i think it would be great like uh, because we have the modeling techniques so if you can like let us know like uh, what to be done like for example that the connectivity for uh, we didn't know the, these things so uh, if we can uh, like a uh, form a like a project i think probably we can work together and uh, uh, solve th- that uh, prob- those uh, problems as well 
Yeah, Kasun, that is that is another good area, Kasun, that I think we must explore, right? Explore, Simulation. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of, you know, you know, theories and you know, so many things, but I mean, the way that you all are doing the, you know, research that, I mean, you, you try to explore the mechanism you know, and, yeah. and, 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 and uh, explain, I mean, this is the mechanism, right? Yeah. So that, that is very, very important, right? I mean, you can do, as you said, I mean, infinite number of testing in computer, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. this is a serious, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, very, very good. Keep it up your work, right? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor, for your uh, all you, the good comments. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Professor, for uh, raising uh, so many uh, questions just to uh, I mean, uh, expand the uh, potential. So uh, you enable us to get maximum out of uh, Dr. Shanaka as well. So uh, special, uh, I like to uh, thank especially uh, Professor Yan Mendes for answering all of uh, uh, the questions in the Q&A yeah, forum. Thank you, thank you, I, I have requested uh, from the panelists. No, because I knew that uh, <laughs> running out of time, so I, I did answer yeah. for Dr. Shanaga. But yeah. but some of the questions I said uh, to write to Dr. Shanaga, find the email. Uh, they will get he will yeah. get some some more uh, yeah. emails on that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Dr. Shanake, I would like to uh, ask uh, one question from the audience, yeah. uh, which was not answered by uh, Professor uh, uh, Mendes. So that is, uh, he, uh, one part of the question was already answered, and uh, the balance part is, uh, what about hydration temperature of uh, ultra high strength concrete, and what about the fire resistance of, uh, performance of uh, UHS? I think uh, the fire one, I think Professor uh, will answer, isn't it, Professor? <laughs> Professor Tian can answer. No, we'll uh, answer that together, yeah, of course, the question, yeah. You uh, answer the first first part, yeah, I will answer. The question, uh, the hydration-wise, actually, uh, we, we, we didn't measure the uh, the temperatures there. Uh, and also, like, we have to tell, like, we didn't see any early thermal cracking or anything because the strength is the best weakness for that. And the secret is, like, uh, using the... Uh, the, the blended uh, the mix. So as I mentioned, like the 40% was around, 40% uh, uh, was uh, uh, supplementary cementation material, which like hydrating in, a, in like slowly. Uh, the other, other thing is like uh, we cured in the water with the right temperature, but the main, main uh, the reason may be the, the blending, the blending, yeah. So like we didn't actually measure any temperature or anything in this case. But uh, but using the blend, blended uh, mix is the very crucial in that curing process. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so the second part just I uh, answer the fire part of it. I mean, yeah, it's uh, we just had even a couple of PhDs completed. Uh, so there'll be some papers. Uh, it's a good question um, with the uh, because of the compactness of the very high strength concrete. It's really uh, the steam pressure and the fire can't escape. So it's really a big problem. The spoiling happens, all that. But so we are uh, in fact trying out few methods, uh, which we have tried. There are, of course, not only us, but a uh, number of researchers have done this. Number of, uh, even applying practically now, we are, that is to use some polypropylene fibers, which will melt uh, under high temperature. So they will, they will create all these pores uh, and so on to, so that the steam pressure can escape. We are now also trying with, uh, again, this is a project led by Dr. Shanak uh, on the plastics. So we are even trying to put some recycled plastics as well. That also we are thinking that will uh, get melted uh, and then create these pores in very high strength concrete because yeah, otherwise it's too compact and uh, there's no way uh, the steam can pressure can escape because the quality is very high uh, uh, and so on. So. So there'll be other methods of using it. Uh, we are also now seeing that a mixture of steel fibers and polypropylene fibers are also very good because the, uh, the, the steel fibers give the tensile strength, which will uh, really resist some of the, the spalling. Spalling is dislodging the, the particles, aggregates and so on. So, uh, so that, and also that as very well explained by Dr. Shanak today, some of these new materials, uh, the, uh, the carbon nanotubes to many other new materials. Uh, idea is to improve the tensile strength uh, so that uh, this will reduce some of the effects. So the, this type of uh, only way is to 
uh, go into this type of modeling. So there's some recent work which we haven't published yet. The last PhD was all about modeling the under the fire situation. It's not easy with the, the elevated temperatures, but we did try to, to do that, but not up to this level. This is all uh, only at the micro level, not even the, expl yeah. the very well explained by Dr. Chanaka at uh, even a lower level, uh, nano level scales. So uh, please write to us if there are any uh, more questions on the fire. We'll be happy to answer that. And also, Professor, Thank can you, I sir. something? Uh, yeah, okay, something here. So I think uh, like uh, this nano indentation actually we can carry out for the high temperatures as well, up to seven hundred Celsius degrees. A very good point. Very good point. Yeah. Minus uh, thirty Celsius degree, uh, because uh, especially for aerospace application, especially for satellite application, they have used this because in space like. Uh, the temperatures like a negative 30 or even beyond that. And also when they are entering the atmospheres again, it's like exposed to 100 Celsius degrees. So they, they, they have used this technology like for the high temperature, like uh, indenting, nano indenting, indenting, indenting at high temperature. So actually uh, th that's also a possibility. And also uh, I think Kanishka uh, like wrote a nice review paper on using uh, uh, fiber like uh, for, for like uh, inorganic fibers like uh, polypropylene uh, PFA fibers in uh, structural application. I think he wrote an, uh, we wrote a, like a very good section on fire side. So that will be, uh, that also accepted. It will be published probably within one, one month, but we can send you the, the paper if anyone needs that, yeah. So. So thank you, thank you professor for uh, giving that answer. So. Uh, from the audience, uh, from the attendees, I am humbly requesting uh, we will be sending you a survey uh, study to uh, uh, improve our future presentation. Please uh, be kind enough to fill and submit it to you. So then uh, from the uh, uh, sessions, uh, we can incorporate uh, those proposals and improve this session. So uh, Dr. Shanaka, again, I think uh, we have a proud uh, teacher of uh, back again, uh, so uh, Professor Jayasinghe. Uh, Professor Jayasinghe, I think uh, you can uh, add uh, something to the presentation. Yeah, actually, uh, uh, yes. Thank you, thank you, Nandana. You know, now, uh, now we are currently in the process of adopting Eurocodes, which actually allow us to go for uh, fairly high strengths. Mm. And uh, uh, you know, now uh, your research would it be applicable to the the Eurocodes as well, because you know, uh, in, if you look at Eurocode, uh, it allows us to go for strengths. I'm just looking at it, like you know, you can have a, a cube strength of uh, cylinder strength of 90, 90 megapascal. So your type of work, I think, is really applicable for the Eurocode as well. And sp my special uh, interest is in the bridge bridge sector. Because in bridges, uh, you know, in Sri Lanka, we need 12,000 bridges. And the problem is they are in very rural areas. Okay. So if we have very heavy sections, we can't transport those uh, bridges. Okay. So if we can do pre-stressing with this type of very high strength concrete, then, you know, we can end up with fairly slender small sections where, you know, by, you know we, can, we can easily use uh, prior shutters and, you know, place the in-situ cast concrete at the, the deck. You know, we can have, a, say, uh, 75 millimeter deck instead of cast and on top of that again you know we can install the, the thicker thicker web because, yeah. because you know if you look at the highway loading we always need a minimum thickness of 160 millimeters but these days you know we prefer to go for 200 millimeter thickness so if we can have you know if we can go for very thin sections that can be easily transported yeah. with high very high strength concrete like you know uh, 100 over 100 megapascal concrete for cube strength or 90 about over 94 cylinders, then there's a very, very high scope for the, the, an application of this in Sri Lanka. So I think, you know, Professor Ranjit Desanak is also keen to do that type of work. And, you know, this might be one area that you can explore in your laboratory because, uh, you know, already you have the technology to go for very high strain. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the maximum we have achieved is about, in our laboratories is about 70 or 80, because, you know, when we go beyond 80, you know, our machine capacity is not enough. The machine that we have is the uh, uh -huh. testing machine that we have has only a capacity of 200 uh, tons. 
So That's when we see that, we can mm -hmm. we can't go beyond beyond. You know, we we never tried uh, cube strength more than mm -hmm. 80 megapascal. Oh, so okay. so can you give some insight into that type it of is, application? Oh, yes, have you yes. thought about it? Or yes, yes, professor. So I think uh, good question, professor. And also I, when you are telling this thing, I can still remember how you taught us relay analysis for bridges, HHB loading. <laughs> so I, can, only that, I I taught you concrete as well. Yeah, exactly. Concrete design. I took lectures on concrete design for you. Exactly. So I think uh, so because when you ask this question, so fortunately I can remember all the U girders and the you know the table that you gave us to select the the yeah. base sections. <laughs> so I think, Professor, I think uh, so I think the deflection is one one critical factor, isn't it? When it comes mm. to the bridges, the other one is the tensile strength because of the the post tensioning. Because as you mentioned, the if it's if, if, from your word, if I say if the the bridge doesn't fail when it's post tension, it will not fail. That's what yes, you told us. <laughs> so I think the the, the the critical thing is the the post tensioning and which is related to tensile strength. So when it comes to high strength concrete, you you saw like the tensile strength is higher, professor. So it can go up to even eight eight megapascal. Oh, that that's uh, that's very good news. Like you know, if you can go up to eight, then yeah, you know we can, we can actually uh, have the thin sections and. Uh, because one of the biggest problems in pre-stress concrete is, you know, we have to, if you have design as class, class two structure, mm. then the maximum tensile strength uh, allowed is close to three. three. But, you know, if you are going for class three structure, you can do it, you know, we can go about five. But, yeah. you know, if you have high strength concrete, we can easily take a tensile strength of eight, then we have uh, the possibility it's, of it's going up to about five or six. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's, other, it's, it's, it's like a five or eight somewhere around there. It depends again depends yes. on that. So now, I mean, even five is a great thing for us. Great grand number, exactly. Yeah, so it's, it's a very good thing. The, for the other thing, so the, because of the higher tensile strength, I think uh, the, uh, the, you can uh, uh, you can benefit that. Uh, the, because the, you can stress a lot uh, because of the tensile capacity. The other thing is the elastic modulus process. You you would have seen the elastic modulus more than fifty megapascal. I think that can get uh, a big that's, that's big, big difference, yeah. isn't it? So yes, uh, I think, uh, if I'm correct, like uh, probably you may be using thirty. I think if I'm correct, like you, we use thirty megapascal or something for uh, like no, a, no 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 for PT we we now we use uh, forty and fifty. For PT uh, work, you know, the, if you look at Orugod the flyover, Orugod mm -hmm. the flyover, you know, the whole bridge was cast with uh, weight 50 concrete. Oh, no, no, uh, the, uh, elastic modulus, elastic modulus, Professor? Probably we are. No, elastic using... modulus is uh, not the, actually we go up to 35. You know, it's a four, uh, four, four grade uh, 40 concrete, we use uh, 37. Yeah. And uh, sorry, we use uh, 20, 25 for 25, the yeah. 27 for 30. Then mm. uh, for 35, we use 32. For thirty, uh, for, for forty, we use something like thirty-five or thirty-six. So yeah. it goes up like that. So when for fifty, we use something like thirty-seven, and we don't try to use something bigger than that. Yeah, exactly. But yes. in this case, we can use like a clearly like we can use something forty-five to fifty. So I think that can yes. make a big, big, big change as well because the so so what do you say? The applications are in uh, tall buildings, so mainly in the bridges. Uh, I, uh, mainly like a. Uh, uh, my PhD was about like using that in uh, tall buildings because when uh, the reason behind because when we use the high strength concrete it become brittle than yes. normal strength concrte yes. so the ductility yes. like issue earthquake so my focus yeah. is actually like uh, I was my like basically my PhD study extend the code to 100 to 150 so we proved right. it right. can be even used up to 150 uh, this was the we can, the, the, providing the reinforcement we can achieve the minimum ductile levels. Like for the non-seismic uh, areas, like in Australia, right. uh, uh, we also use the Australian like the earthquake code. So, so we can use uh, up to 150 with the proper reinforcement. So my my, my PhD was about developing the the, the theories like uh, uh, to, to use this in the like the structural applications. Uh, uh, then uh, the codes actually the existing code actually provide the guideline only up to 90 to 100. Megapascal mainly because of the ductility. It's right. not because of we can't get the strength, yes. but because That's of the ductility. Especially for the New Zealand, they have limited it to uh, six, uh, 80 megapascal. In Australia, they have pushed to 120. Actually, our study also helped to push that. But uh, China, I think it's like a cubic strength of 80. Uh, Europe, they have limited it to 90, isn't it? So, but they yeah, have 90, like 90. No, 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 no,
cylinders. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cylinders, cylinders are between 105 something. Oh, oh. So here they allow us to go up to 105. Exactly. So the the, the the test that we did is like all the theories we developed for a cylindric strength. So the theory is like uh, we prove like a, like a, for a, like a non a non seismic or the with the yeah, yeah. ductile requirement we, we can use. So basically basically uh, basically the question is do you recommend it for uh, earthquake zones or not? Uh, earthquake zone like uh, then we have to provide the proper ductility. That's the, uh, oh, yes. the for example like yeah. let's say no, uh, our concrete. If, 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 if without reinforcement, we can it it cannot have a duct no, no, So no. exactly. So so with the reinforcement, uh, uh, we, we can uh, go for one hundred fifty, but for the nominal ductility. But for Actually, the, share, the, the other question is other question is when you are going, you know, when you are providing reinforcement for ductility. Now mm -hmm. we have two options. One is to use eight millimeter bars. The other one is to use ten millimeter bars. Mm -hmm. So what is your experience? You know, with that, like you know, uh, for the scrubs, you know, scrubs professor. So, Shahanaga, now there's a big difference. Now, for, if you take 408 millimeter bars for one ton of uh, for one ton, you get 400 bars of 8 millimeter, yeah. whereas you get only 280 bars of uh, 10 millimeter. So, yeah. so if you can actually go do the earthquake detailing by using 8 millimeter for confinement. Then, then you know it, it becomes more affordable. Otherwise, you mm -hmm. know when you try to do earthquake detailing with ten millimeter bars, mm -hmm. one thing is congestion is more, and the mm -hmm. other one is other one is cost is slightly more. Yeah, true. That's so, a, do you have any idea, like you know how the how the how the steel performs uh, under earthquake situations when you have different bar diameters, like eight, eight and ten? Yeah. So at the end, professor, like we have to provide the uh, the, the the duct lead is given by the confinement, like the confinement pressure. Yes, that's right. Then we that's will right. calculate like what is the number of bars and spacing we need for that particular diameter. Yeah. So if we can provide using eight millimeter bars, like if it's like affordable yes. and it's, it's convenient and also less wastage as well. I think we should go with yes, 8 right. bar, but let's say yeah. uh, we need higher ductility level, like let's say higher confinement pressure. Then yes. we sometimes we have to use the uh, 10 millimeter bars, even sometimes 12 millimeters bars. That's what we found. Like yes. let's say the like medium right. ductility, that's even right. we have to go to 12 millimeters. So it depends on the context and the, the level yes, of the right. right. detailing we need. Yeah. But I think as we mentioned, better we go for a smaller diameter bar as, as yes. much as possible. now. Now these days, you know, we have designed, you know, I mean only reviewing our design, and they have gone for uh, PT, and they have gone for this uh, uh, 5567. Concrete, 55 cube strength, so we should have cylinder strength concrete. This is a this 1.5 kilometer long uh, elevated, uh, what do you call a uh, flyover? 1.5 uh, uh -huh. kilometer long flyover, crossing, you know, this is in the Naum mouth area where, you know, it crosses one railway crossing, then it goes all the way and cross the other, goes over the other railway crossing as well. Okay. So in that one, you know, for the superstructure, we have used uh, six, uh, uh, 50, 55, 67, oh, um, that is 55 cylinder strength, 67 cube strength. Wow. And oh. uh, for the uh, tower, you know, the pier is also having vertical priestess and also pier capim beam is having horizontal priestess. Mm. So, the, you know, we use priestess to eliminate most of the steam. Mm. So, uh, in that one, you know, for even for the substructure, we are using the same concrete. Yeah. So, in this, you know, that is the first time we have gone up to that level in priestess oh. and it will be uh, constructed shortly the reason for going for that high strength is the for 40 meter long beams the height was actually we had to, we could use only height of 1.2 meter okay generally for 30 meters we use 1.3 for 40 meters we use 1.5 but in this particular project uh, the, due to some reason they said you know the maximum depth of the girder is 1.2 so we went for this particular concrete and we have developed the concrete as well. And uh, I actually helped those people to uh, get the concrete strength with uh, high grade uh, super, super plus size. Uh, that, mm. you know, that is manufactured by our Millennium Technologies. Mm. Who, who is our, one of our friends? Who, who is, what's his name? Uh, the Ravi, uh, Ravi. Ravi, Ravi, uh, oh, Ravi. Uh, I know, I, I have been. Yeah, that is that is called Millennium Technologies. So uh, they, they are they are they are supplying high grade super plus size where we can hit what is the ratio about 0 0.2, 0 0.23 to 0 0.25. Mm -hmm. 
or uh, per, per kilo per, per ton sorry per meter cube water content of 130 135 mm. so we are going for that type of concrete and uh, i have already given the big design for them so they are actually trying it now mm. so you know the simple method i use for getting a mix right where we, we, we look at the concrete and, uh, sorry, cement and ply ash. And then, uh, you know, uh, we uh, reduce the water cement ratio and uh, add about 5% fly ash and 15%, uh, sorry, 5% silica film and 15% fly ash. And uh, we keep the cement content around 450 to prevent uh, DEF effect. Mm. And then uh, what we do is, you know, we reduce the water cement ratio to about 0.23 to 0.25, mm. and we can easily go for high-spin concrete in Sri Lanka because very our economical, are so very, good. very economical. Like uh, because I think yeah, as we, right. like a professor, like uh, because of the the, the water reducer admixtures. I know also I know like yes. uh, Mr. Ravi. I think he he's uh, yes, like exactly. uh, he produced. So I think uh, that that's then if you can reduce the water uh, to binary ratio, I think then we can come up with very economical mixes. I think, but you are doing yes, of like, course, of course, yes, yes, very good because uh, we are unnecessary adding water, isn't it, Professor? Like uh, sometimes, no, no, actually, actually, that is that that we have to look at it to two aspects. One mm -hmm. thing is, you know, if you are, we can use we the high grade super plus size is about three times more expensive than the normal at normal plus size. Mm. So because of that, you know, unless there's a good reason to go for, unless you are going for grade, it's more expensive. You can use the cheaper one. Sorry. You can sorry. use the cheaper yeah. one. So, sorry, you sorry. can use the cheaper one. Yeah, yeah. Once uh, when, when, you know, when you want a strength of about uh, 40, 50, you can use the normal plus size. Eh? But if mm -hmm. you are going beyond 50, only you have to go for high grade super plus size. That's true. That's true. And also, Professor, we did a cost analysis also. Yeah. For a, like a tall building, we took a tall yeah, building. Right. Then we did the analysis for like a, if we yes. designed it using the 50 megapascal, let's say 70 megapascal, 100 megapascal. So then, uh, because what happened like when we go for higher strength, the cost increases. And also yes. the amount of rainforest also increases per uh, uh, cubic, uh, let's say meter of uh, uh, yeah, function. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in yes. the other hand, because of the highest strength, it reduced the section sizes. We did a, like a yes. design yes. right. entire tall building, like every beam and the column. Right. In, interestingly, like we found two things. First thing is like if you uh, calculate the what is the cost per one megapascal, like if you uh, yeah. Calculate the full cost and divided by the megapascal. We found high strength, ultra high strength concrete still cheap per megapascal. Yes. Then the other thing That's is right. the, the then we yeah, calculate yeah. The and also the entire tall building can be controlled. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then we, we How about the reflection? What was the effect on reflection? Sorry. Deflection. What was the effect on deflection? Deflection also less uh, because of that elastic modulus is uh, less. Uh, but uh, they had the section size. So actually, I didn't look at that, uh, Professor. That's a good point. Actually, I didn't look at the yeah. deformation. I just did the cost calculation. That's a good point, actually, because when we reduce the section, yeah, actually, deformation is also very important. Very important, exactly. So then, uh, what yeah. we found actually, the overall cost of the building reduced when we use the high strength concrete because the, the it significantly reduced the the volume. Yeah, because so I think uh, that's a good actually finding for the industry aspect. That's right. That's right. Mm. Yes, it's expensive, but in Why overall, that level? that's really very good. That's right. Yeah. Okay, Shanuta, thank you okay. very much for I'm very happy to see you. Sir. I'm, I'm really happy, and also you can see like uh, all the, the 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 experience and the teaching that we got. Uh, uh, from Moratua, uh, we are uh, lenders. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, nice to hear about uh, what's his name, uh, our other boys. Uh, Anushka and uh, Sadiq, they, they are doing well actually, very well. Yeah, what's the, what's the, uh, ah, Sadiq, Sadiq. Hello, Sadiq. Sir. Yeah. <laughs> Sadiq Good to see you. So, yes, Sadiq. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm writing uh, the thesis now, so yeah. I'm fine. Writing the thesis. I'm fine. Okay. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and and, uh, and your other friend is with us now. Is with us. Yeah, show me your face. <laughs> and then he's doing a lot of, lot of research and uh, work with us at the moment. Well, Anishir. Anishir. Ah. 
Good to see you. Yeah, you too, sir. Hi. Sorry? Yeah, good to see you too, sir. You are doing well. You... Okay, so yeah, wish you all the best then. So I think Thank I will be late in Sri Lanka now. And you, it is, this may be midnight for you. No, no, no. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. So, so, me, you know, I've been asked to come for dinner. So I will leave now. Right? Oh, okay. <laughs> right? Okay. You may discuss to uh, 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 Madam also. Madam, I don't, I'll do that. I'll do that. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. So, uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you. So, yes. uh, so, uh, Dr. Pranaka, we have uh, another uh, one uh, question. Uh, so we'll oh, that's all right. I'm really enjoying uh, to see the people like uh, good. You know, my <laughs> good, good. And, like, and, the, and the enthusiasm here, yeah, I mean, uh, I'm really happy. Like, it's like being to Sri Lanka. I couldn't come to Sri Lanka for the last two years because of Corona. Now I'm really happy to see the known faces. My batchmates are also here. So, I'm really yeah, happy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> And also, I so, want to uh, thank, especially thank Yasendra, engineer Yasendra. Actually, I think he is looking after like the the, the lab uh, in C lab. So he actually coordinates right, okay. a lot with us. Uh, uh, so uh, th thank 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 very very much uh, for him as yeah. well. Okay, then in that case, please uh, excuse me because you know I have been asked to come for dinner now. Right. So, Nandana, <laughs> thank you very much. After a long you, time, you are thank very much so for joining and yeah. uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. The questions and the thoughts, I think that, that's really important because yeah, yeah. you are, you are uh, like, I, I know, like, you are, like, not only a researcher, but a very excellent uh, engineer as well. So, we, we got that the same, uh, like, uh, in, in, like uh, you know, like, yeah, I can tell you, you know, I certified Altair. Yeah. I'm the, I was the tech engineer, tech and certifying engineer for Altair. And uh, if you want, you know, anything like that model, tell me, I'll do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, thank you very much. Then. Okay, good night, good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. So, uh, we'll uh, take yeah. questions uh, from uh, yeah. part. I will uh, just for the interest of time, I will uh, take all three questions uh, together. So, first one is uh, please let me know the validity of the numerical models you are using with size and Number two. Uh, do you have any theory behind the models or uh, you present with uh, aggregate density or uh, you use test data to produce the model? Yes. The I can hear you, is... Mr. Anden. Eh? I don't know. Sorry. Maybe you have to get away from mic or something. Okay. Uh, uh, is it clear now? Better? Now clear. Sorry. Can you yeah. please tell so, me? Yeah. The question number one is uh, let me know the validity of the numerical models to use uh, with uh, high strength concrete. Uh, and number two, do you have any theory behind the models you present with aggregate density or you use only the test data to produce the model? And question number three is, uh, as I know, Japanese are using some methods to select aggregate for their high strength concrete using aggregate strength. And it is very simple and uh, effective. I, and any comments on that? Uh, Okay, the first one, uh, the first question is about the validation. Oh, yes, we validated the uh, uh, the model simulation model using the experiment data. Like then we carried out the uh, the parametric uh, whatever. So we can mesoscale scale can be easily validated. Uh, the molecular testing that we are did actually we validated using the limited data we have. So we are planning to extend the, these validations uh, because for the nano indentation, like uh, there are a lot of limited data for uh, like compressive use strength, elastic modulus, like you can find many data. But for the, the work that we are doing for the nano indentation, actually they are validated uh, using the, the experiment, the limited number of experiments we have done. But uh, we are going to uh, ex expand the, our data sets. Uh, then the molecular simulation, like uh, they are like, uh, again, like uh, coming from molecular, uh, sorry, the quantum uh, level, uh, the uh, level, then the, the, uh, then the inputs are derived. So the molecular simulations are like, uh, also like uh, validated, but as I mentioned before, like we can't validate it using the, the physical testing because there's no, no equipment to do testing in that scale because nano indenta is the, the, the final. <laughs> The, the, or the last equipment that, that we can use for that, uh, the, the microscope. So beyond that, there's no equipment. So that's the answer. The second uh, one, uh, I think you asked about the theoretical expression. Oh, yeah, we have used a lot of data, like around 500 uh, 
uh, to derive those equation, uh, the, the elastic module and its strength. So, but again, as I mentioned, it's like a kind of a guidance only because uh, if you use the two different sand, you will come up with the two different answers. Fly ash also same, silica fume also same. That's our experience. For example, we use the same uh, the mix uh, design and Sadeep and uh, Kanishka tried to made it, but we didn't end up with the same strength because the reason behind the fly ash we use is not the same as the fly ash, the, uh, the silica fume we use is uh, different. So it's like that, but but uh, but it's so, a sir, doctor. This question is specifically about the model of uh, aggregate density. Uh, yeah, aggregate density exactly. So the, then the, the the aggregate density. Uh, uh, so we look. I, I think he's asked for the equation, right? Is that we develop the model validation? I think it's about the that equation. So we we yes. go, go, yeah we got it from the uh, lot of literatures. As I uh, as 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 asked by uh, Professor Nana Kara, uh, the reason to use the aggregate is they have a lot of data on uh, the density of aggregates, but we couldn't find the strength result for uh, strength result for the aggregates uh, because when the people were doing the experiments, they did not measure the strength of the aggregate because it's difficult as well because you need the code sample for the the cores the the cylinder uh, cylinders so they didn't present that in the literature so we couldn't use that for the, our equation that's why we had to use the density as the parameter to represent uh, the property of the aggregate uh, i know the japanese has the uh, this the, the strength based one even i saw like some researchers even develop some equation to find elastic modulus of uh, uh, the high strength concrete, there were some Japanese researchers as well. So uh, we can use it like strength of the aggregate, but but getting that number quite difficult. So for an industry, getting the density is easy. So that's why we incorporate the density, which represent the strength of the aggregate. Uh, in, uh, in aggregate, yes. So that's why we didn't include the strength, yes. Okay. Uh, uh, no to yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Nandana. Engineer Nandana Amunutudu is our general manager for industrial sales and INSEE Concrete. I think one of the very enthusiastic, energetic, and very interesting sessions today. Uh, I thought only the uh, presentation, but I think the QA session and the involvement of our uh, resource personalities like Professor Nanakara, Professor Jayasinghe, Professor Prihan Mendes, and so on. Uh, this session today, the 26th um, knowledge sharing web, uh, session, which was the 11th webinar session, made us very uh, proud as INSEE eye to eye innovation to industry. And also, as uh, I think um, people who are representing uh, the local fraternity, I think we can be very proud and uh, we can be very happy, uh, especially about the knowledge, experience, and exposure which was shared. Which was shared. So uh, let me invite uh, another very resource, uh, very uh, vital resource person in our company uh, to give away the vote of thanks, Dr. Moza Balbaki. Uh, Dr. Moza Balbaki is, um, we consider as, a, 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 I would say, a person, a person, a gentleman who always admire uh, the knowledge um, uh, which is uh, getting inculcated at, in, in Sri Lanka. So I think I'm sure Dr. Moza, when you listen to this nice presentation, fruitful presentation and the fruitful uh, discussion, um, I think you have a lot of things to uh, tell and express. Dr. Moza Balbaki, over to you, Head of Pro Products and Solution Portfolio of INSI Cement. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Dishan. Uh, just to start, I would like to say that uh, I feel very somehow uh, a privilege eh, to be able to be with the group today to hear to Dr. Chanaka presentation. Uh, the topic of uh, sustainable high performing concrete, uh, especially when we look after the what will be beyond uh, concrete technology with the new technology in terms of investigation, in terms of, uh, of uh, new materials. I think that uh, the future is bright and I'm sure that uh, uh, when I see all my Sri Lankan colleagues in Sri Lanka, like in Australia now, I think that uh, 
uh, there is a, a, a quite a, somehow a, a big potential capability that uh, Sri Lanka sure we will be uh, in the next years uh, built with uh, really uh, uh, state of the art uh, uh, technology. Having said that, uh, really, I would like to uh, somehow uh, uh, thanks uh, all the participants. Uh, I was just looking to the numbers. Uh, uh, we get almost over 210 uh, participants mm -hmm. that show clearly how the, the topic was important. And uh, at the same time, it is a, uh, it is a virtual uh, somehow uh, a session. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, since now uh, last, uh, uh, let's say last April, uh, we went uh, live uh, with virtual for this knowledge sharing se uh, session. And I hope that uh, very soon the country uh, uh, will go to a more stable situation with the pandemic that we can again meet uh, uh, in person to uh, in our eye to eye collaboration space as we did it uh, from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Uh, having said that, I would like really to thank on behalf of, uh, of INSEE, I would like to express my, my gratitude for the really outstanding presentation from uh, uh, Dr. Chanaka. Uh, Dr. Chanaka, really, you, uh, I say, you went through a very holistic approach to explain what is relevant when we try to improve uh, concrete properties. You have uh, discussed about, a lot about engineering properties. And I am sure that we can spend more hours uh, uh, on uh, on this very important uh, aspect for uh, the knowledge you have shared with you. Thank you. Uh, you have shared with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, it is too late uh, in uh, in Sri Lanka. Always, uh, my colleague Isuru always uh, mentioned to me that uh, thank you for your uh, your generosity, your commitment. You know, to share your knowledge. Uh, today, it was really a great, great day uh, uh, somehow uh, to participate to this knowledge sharing session. Of course, with, uh, uh, with the panelists, with Professor Brian Mendes, with Professor Anura uh, Nanayakara, with Professor uh, Jaya Sinta. I mean, uh, it was just the big plus because uh, we could really uh, feel uh, uh, somehow uh, the, the high quality of, uh, of the knowledge that was discussed uh, uh, in this, uh, in this uh, seminar. I would like also to take uh, this opportunity really to thanks all my team, my entire team at, uh, at I2I and all my colleagues at INSTE for organizing uh, this online session. I'm talking with you from, uh, uh, from Switzerland, uh, you, uh, uh, Professor, uh, Dr. Chanaka, you are on the other side of Sri Lanka and Australia. Uh, yes, everybody is in the middle in Sri Lanka. And still, I would like really to thank all my colleagues, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, to organize in a very successful way uh, this uh, uh, online uh, consecutive now 11 uh, uh, months uh, with very positive and encouraging feedback from the participants. Therefore, uh, we are really looking forward to continue uh, 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 this uh, knowledge sharing session. As you know, now is uh, traditionally is the last Thursday of every month. And uh, hopefully uh, this month, month of June, the topic will be about uh, the new Sri Lankan standard on Portland composite cement. Therefore, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to also welcome uh, uh, the same uh, number of big participants uh, uh, for this session. Therefore, uh, uh, I hope you stay safe uh, with your family, uh, with your neighbor, that all our people in Sri Lanka stay safe. And uh, having said all that, I um, again would like to thank everybody, to thank uh, our resource person today, Dr. Chanaka for uh, the really uh, very interesting and uh, very somehow, uh, uh, I call it generous, huh? in a very generous way, you have shared all this great experience with us. Thank you so much. And uh, I wish you a, a good evening, good night, wherever you are in this planet. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you, thank you so much. Thank you, good thank night. you everyone. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Moza Balbaki, Head of Products and Solution Portfolio in C Cement. Uh, it's almost 1.30 a.m. in the morning, Dr. Shanaka. Thank you again and again uh, for your kind you. support and your team's support, mm -hmm. and uh, especially the knowledge that you have shared. So let's catch up again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, uh, with the 27th knowledge sharing web, uh, session, uh, and which will be the uh, 12th uh, webinar session.
by INSEE I2I Innovation to Industry Collaboration Space. Thanks again to our resource personality today and also all the colleagues uh, who uh, joined us today. Thanks again and be safe. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Okay. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Musa. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you very bye -bye. much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Engineer Nandana and uh, Engineer Rishan. Thank you so much. Yeah. I think we enjoyed a lot. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye bye. I think, uh, uh, I think not only that, I think this created another project with Professor Nanakkar. I think we should uh, <laughs> get the. Uh, Good to hear. <laughs> Yeah, great. I think uh, the INSEE can be the, you know, like, because you have the, the good labs and everything, like, uh, we can utilize those things, like, uh, like not only like we can solve your problems and uh, research, because Professor Nana Karas would do a lot of research. Actually, engineer Yasendra, like, uh, like uh, I think he, I, I met him, like, he's the person who contacted me. Mm -hmm. Also, like, uh, he said he also, like, looking after uh, the lab, uh, uh, I know him like he also very good engineer so yeah. I think probably like in the future uh, we can we can work on the cement uh, concrete research like in a new in a, like in a deeper in a, in a new way uh -huh. so uh, so Professor Nanakaro also here so I probably I, 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 I will link with him again and see like how we can continue this good all the good works very good yeah thank you yeah thank you Sanke, yeah. Uh, yeah, from our side, what we can say is uh, at the moment we are, uh, we are trying to facilitate in, in this final stage uh, a one PhD student program uh, with okay. RMIT. Oh, very uh, good. Yeah, actually, uh, we are quite open for that kind of uh, collaboration. Uh, oh, very work. good. So we, yeah, we have all. Yes. Please, yes, I think good. Please send me. A, I, I can. Uh, sorry, I, I don't have your email address unless I can send or I can send. Uh, my sure, I will share. Uh, yeah. I think we we, uh, we should take 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 this uh, like uh, further, isn't it? Uh, Professor Nana Kar also there, so I think we can uh, work together. So we, we have many many capabilities. I think we can we are more than happy to you know share those things. Yes, yeah. Definitely. Okay. okay. Definitely. The engineer uh, Nandana. Okay. Yes, thank okay. you. Okay. 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 May Bye I say Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Right. Avishanka. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.